Okay, so we're just going to call to order. We acknowledge that the land in which we gather is the traditional unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq First Nation. Any declarations of conflict of interest? Councillor Duran. Thank you, Mayor Brown. I have a uh, conflict in uh, one of the plan first one of the planning uh, resolutions, so I'll be stepping out. It's my son-in-law is involved in that. Thank okay. you. Okay. Any others? Um, I don't think STR is in this. No, this is. Where? What? What uh, is it? Number, number four. So, d did you want to get up and just? Hold on, yeah, yeah. just one second. So I'm in conflict on, uh, I, sorry, I don't have the uh, document. I'm number four. The, number four under the short-term uh, regular, uh, short-term rentals. Okay, Councilor Twill, if you're gonna do it, you have to put it, no, you have to put it on the record, so you turn on your mic and please stand up and just tell us that you're in conflict under what one. Ask one the public record. It's, uh, resolution four? Yep. Yeah, in conflict. Thank you. Okay, approval of the agenda. Um, I have to add, I want to add a closed item to the agenda. This will have to be added to the approval of agenda. It will be item six on the agenda, following business arising from the minutes. And it's a motion to move into a closed session as per section 119, subsection 1, G and F of the Municipal Government Act. G is the conduct of an, uh, of an investigation under or enforcement of an act or bylaw. H, information which, if disclosed, could prejudice security and the maintenance of the law. And the topic is cybersecurity legal investigation. And the reason we need to have that right now, because Betty French, uh, CAO, is Betty coming to what? Uh, Betty is not feeling well, and she is the manager of finance, and she wishes to, she uh, she wants to report this to council as soon as possible. So I need to add that to the agenda. Moved, seconded. Okay. So, could we just find out where Betty is before we? And if if I could just correct something here, CAO. Eleanor, it says section 119, one, subsection 1, G and F, but I read off G and H. Should that be G and F? Yes, information which, if disclosed, could prejudice security and the maintenance of the law. So that's F. Okay. So that's just a correction. You can what? Okay. Okay. So we'll move on. So I have adoption of previous draft minutes. Regular meeting December 11th, 2023. And special meeting was in the package but not noted on the agenda. But anything from special meeting, we do not deal with it here. We have to deal with it at the next special meeting of closed. Just to closed, okay? <laughs> Councilor Twill. Well, I have a question under, it was a special meeting that we recently held just a couple of days ago regarding the, uh, the uh, 11 allegations that Council dealt with. So do I get that opportunity to ask that here in a public forum? Because uh, we did have that discussion. Then, then we went yep. to an open forum where we passed a resolution. And there was uh, items that were discussed in the public. So I want to get a clear understanding yep. as to what we're uh, permitted to discuss and what we're not permitted yep. to discuss. What's, uh, what's open and transparent and what's not. Yep. So I want to have that opportunity to ask that question. I, I, Eleanor, just CAO, Eleanor, I think that would fall under 6.5, Strategic Priorities, Communications. Oh. 
No, it's under the minutes. I know. We're approving but, the minutes. But hold so, on. No, no, but the minutes for that meeting are not here. They're not here. But they're referenced. No, they're that's the special the meeting, January 3rd. But again, anything referenced. Do you have the minutes there? January 3rd? Under the BDO? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, do you want to leave that, Ellen, just let me just finish. Yeah. Do we want to leave that for the strategic priorities, no. communications, and intergovernment cooperation, or do, should we deal with it now, CAO Eleanor? Thank you, Worship. So are you just suggesting to discuss it under 6.5 in the agenda? Councillor Tweel is asking to discuss it under um, business arise near the minutes, yeah. special meeting. Yeah. Business arising from the minutes yeah. would also be a, a good time to discuss it yeah. as well. So, Councillor Tool, you want to bring it up? Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. So, as we know, uh, we had a considerable discussion uh, at a closed door meeting. Then we broke into the uh, open forum. A resolution was passed by Council. Um, <coughs> I stated my reasons as to why I was opposed to the, uh, the, uh, the process in, in terms of the way the investigation was conducted, and that's fine. Um, but uh, the mayor did an interview afterwards, and the information was discussed. And what I want to know is, what are we permitted legally to discuss? Because if, if we have to go to an open forum to pass a resolution. I understand that, but here's what I'm trying to get, trying to, uh, un, trying to uh, grasp is, what are we permitted to discuss in a public forum, so that our constituents can hear uh, the rationale for uh, why uh, majority of the council said no uh, to continue on with the investigation, or how we made that determination, or what the methodology was. Uh, so what are we permitted to discuss? That's what I'd like to know, okay. and, and some of the residents would like to know. Yeah. What, are, what are we permitted to discuss in an open forum? Yeah. And if we're going to go into an open forum and discuss what we discussed in a closed-door session, then why have the closed-door session? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm trying to understand why we went behind closed doors. Why didn't we just have that discussion in an open forum? Okay. I'm trying to understand okay. the, the process and the procedure. Yep. Okay, so we have legal counsel here, and because you didn't want to discuss it under strategic priorities, I'm going to go directly to our legal counsel. Do you want to start with the CA? Yeah. Can I just, I'll do it. Okay, CAO, we'll start with the CAO. Thank you, Worship. Through to Councillor Twill. So you can discuss any of the 11 allegations at this point. That information was made public at uh, the June 12, 2023 meetings, all 11 allegations were made public, along with the explanations of, of what was involved in the investigations that was done. There were some redactions in there um, that we have to do under um, the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act. Um, it's all there if you go to the city's website, charlottetown.ca, you go under council meeting packages. The June 12th package has all the information in there about the 11 allegations. Now, the reason why we had to go into closed session the other day is because it involved a legal, um, a legal opinion. And um, as with all municipalities, we don't share legal opinions with the public because when we do that, we lose privilege. And under the Municipal Government Act, under Section 119, it allows us to have closed sessions to discuss a legal opinion. And the legal opinion had to do with the resolution that was passed initially back, um, I believe, at the April meeting that addressed April the 20th. 11 allegations. Yeah. And we had to, from a procedural point of view, change how we went about that. I realize it's a little complicated because when we, um, in April, when we passed the resolution then, we passed the resolution saying that nine of the 11 allegations would now be considered um, satisfied and we wouldn't look into them any further. And there were two outstanding allegations that needed to be investigated. One was a request to look at um, 
request for a legal opinion outside of our regular lawyers to have them look at the Municipal Government Act and our procedural bylaw to see if, um, if it aligned. And we went and we did that. And we received the legal opinion. That legal opinion was shared, um, I believe, at the June 12th meeting when we shared all that information. Um, it was shared in open because in this particular case, it isn't our regular lawyers that we use for this. This was another lawyer we went outside. We wanted to share with the public what this lawyer had said. The second legal, um, the second allegation that still needed to be investigated, which had to do with um, selling of city uh, inventory, which if you want more details, you can go to the June 12th minutes. It's all there. Um, we were asked to try and open up a police investigation, open it back up again. Um, it had already been completed before, and we didn't have enough evidence to do so. So the re resolution that was passed was that all 11 of the allegations would now be considered satisfied and looked into, and that's what was passed the other night. So all the information, if anyone's curious about any of that, that was all released on June 12th uh, of 2023, last year. It was also released at the same time as the lesser redacted BDO report. It's all in the same agenda. Councillor Twill. Thank you. Thank you for your explanation. Uh, I understand that we can't share the legal opinion with, uh, with the community, with the broader community. I understand that perfectly well. Um, but what I don't understand is, do we have the freedom to discuss, and again, I'm trying to understand the process, do we have the freedom to be able to discuss each one of those allegations uh, and how they were um, dealt with in terms of what, what, the, what the evaluation was by council and how we arrived at those decisions from an individual perspective. There was 11 allegations and, and how we arrived at that decision for each one of them. Again, I understand you don't share the solicitor client privileged uh, legal opinions with, with the broader community, but the 11 allegations, could that have been discussed in a public forum? We can win camera, discuss the legal opinion, open up the doors, and then discuss the 11 allegations and go from 1 to 11 and have that discussion in a, in a public forum. Is that... Uh, uh, is, that, is, that, is that legal? CEO Eleanor, and then we, we want to get legal opinion. David Hooley's here because he wrote the opinion. Thank you, Rachel. I'll, I'll just finish. The, the answer is um, it has been open, put in, in open. It, on your June 11th agenda of last year, it's all there with the staff report along with the breakdown of the investigations that happened. Right. That's, that, it's all there in the public to see. Um, the one thing, once an item has been, been dealt with, except for legal opinions, in closed session, they become public eventually you can make them become public. So that's exactly what we did with this information. The only information that's not here is items that had to be redacted under the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act. So can an elected official talk about these 11 allegations and the BDO report? Yes. They cannot talk about information that was given to them um, that would be redacted in the public eye. So um, names, identifying names, that's protected unless someone's given the permission for that name to be shared. So um, my advice for any of the elected officials is if you, if you want to know what you can speak about in this regard, I would go to the June 11th agenda. It's all there and you'll be able to see what's redacted and what's not redacted. Um, and it's all public. Okay, Councilor Twill, we have to move on. Uh, no, we have a long agenda. No, 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 th th please, we want to move on. I, I think that if you want to speak to it, you can speak to the CAO, or you can go and speak to the CAO with our legal counsel. So, um, I have 6.5, but I did add a closed item agenda, so I have to get a motion to go into a closed sec session as per section 119, subsection 1, G, and F. Moved by Councillor Ramsey, second by Councillor Beck, all those in favor? 
Okay. I just have to ask you to please leave the uh, gallery. And again, it's because of our Betty French is here and she doesn't want to stay too long. I believe Mr. Wayne Long is staying, I think, and uh, I believe the police chief is too. Yeah. And, and, and Rory Chaisson. They, and is Janice coming back?
Sorry, 6.1, Planning and Heritage, Deputy Mayor Alana Yakov, Chair. Oh, go ahead there, Councillor Beck. Yeah, I think there's some business arising from the minutes that I had. Just some questions. Under, under adoption. Under our previous minutes. Which one, under regular or special? Regular. December 11th and uh, the other one was from, actually the other one would come from uh, the planning and heritage. Well, planning and heritage. Uh, sorry, the January, th uh, no, sorry. January 3rd? No. <clears throat> It would come from uh, the planning board meeting. It would come from. Yeah, that would be under planning and heritage. She's got minutes there. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'll go with that. Okay. Thank good. you. Do you want to speak first? Do you want to start your report? And then you can go to them, those minutes. Hi, everybody. Uh, so uh, the Planning and Heritage Committee um, did not meet since the last council meeting, so therefore there are no minutes in your package. Uh, the Planning Board met on January the 2nd. Copies of the Planning Board reports are um, also included in your package. Heritage Board did not meet the last month, so therefore there's nothing in the package on that. The Design Review Board again did not meet the last month. The Affordable Housing Advisory Committee did meet on December 19th. Copies of those minutes are included in your package. And the Planning and Heritage Committee um, does have an STR update report with a resolution that has been added to your package from a December 5th, um, uh, 2023 meeting. I have four resolutions to be put forward, um, three from Planning Board and one from Planning and Heritage Committee. We have no first readings, we have no second readings, but you'll also notice in your package that there is um, a listing of the permit applications issued um, from December 23rd um, and December 23rd along with um, year to date that's included in this package. So if anybody has any questions um, on my report, I will do my best to answer and, um, and then we can proceed with the resolutions. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy. Councilor Beck? And then Councilman Twill. You can go. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Then okay. business arise. Thank you for your report, Deputy. Um, I just want to go back to the minutes. Uh, there was, I, I think, one omission that I, I think should be noted from the minutes, and it's it's on page twenty one, and uh, it's with regards to if you recall it or when we were talking about the four twenty was it four twenty one St. Peter's Road. Is that the address? <clears throat> One of the things that was raised by the resident member, Basil Hamley, was the concern about um, the additional entry point into that. And I think that should be reflected here, because I think that was a significant uh, um, point that was raised by Basil. And if I remember correctly, the understanding was that the province was going to look into that to see whether that was going to be par prior to the public presentation happening because I think that's a pretty significant although it's a small piece of the strip it was it was raised and I think it was a valid point that we discussed at the committee level that I, I think should be addressed or included in the minutes here somewhere and brought forward when we have the uh, public presentation on that so that was just the one thing and I think that if we could uh, make sure that that gets addressed uh, the other thing is, is I was, uh, I noticed that it was referenced about the status of the bylaw <coughs> officer. I'm just wondering if you could provide an update on that as well, too. So just those two points. Thanks. Thank you for that, Councillor Beck. I did check with um, our manager, David, prior to the meeting. He has not gotten any update from the province yet in terms of that third entrance point in. Um, now I can see if he has anything else he wants to follow up on that um, and whether or not we should be proceeding with that resolution moving on to a public consultation until we actually do have that information. 
Um, but I will get him to respond to that. But just before he does, so once I sit down, I don't have to get back up again because it's really cold. <laughs> um, um, you wanted an update on the bylaw officer, um, the new one that is starting in January. And I'm just trying to see if I have the exact date. Our bylaw officers start at January 2nd. Yeah, so they've already started. And um, yeah, so that's your update on that. Okay, over to you, David. David and Donna, do you want to uh, come into this under, it's on page 21 of your digital copy. Maybe you don't have it yeah. there, but uh, it's the motion that was passed, correct, uh, Councillor Beck? The motion that was passed and Basil Hamley raised some points. It's to go into public consultation. Yeah. <coughs> the, if I remember the discussion, it was... We wanted to ascertain whether it was two entry points or three entry points, and I think that was a it was a that was the question that we didn't have the answer to at the time. And uh, I think Dave said at the time that it is provincial. That part is a provincial responsibility. It's not our responsibility. So the question kind of had to come, or the answer had to kind of come from them. So I think that was just what we wanted to make sure that we got that clarified so that when we're going to the public meeting, uh, the residents will know exactly this is what it will look yeah. like. And I think that was really what our concern, uh, and again, raised by Basil, and it was a good point, um, but I think that was the answer we were looking, or the question we were looking for an answer for. Councillor Tweel, then Councillor McCabe. <coughs> Last month, I rose to question the um, commitment that was made by the provincial government in the resolution that was dated September 23, 2023. The province provides the City of Charlottetown Police Services with funding to the satisfaction of Charlottetown City Chief of Police under a safe spaces an agreement for four police officers to serve the area of influence. Now, I raised this issue back the last council meeting. I didn't get an answer. I did say I was going to bring it back up. I read the front page of The Guardian, a story written by Logan McLean, and it said the province fulfilled their agreement to add two police officers, when in this resolution it clearly states four. So my question is, from a city's corporation perspective, why is there not compliance from the province of Prince Edward Island? I mean, it was their commitment. This resolution passed eight to two. Myself, Councilor Duran said no. So where's the other two police officers? And I don't want to hear, well, we got two police officers from the, uh, that are supposed to be circling around the outreach center dealing with mental health, okay? That's not illustrated in the agreement. We're still shy two police officers from the province of Prince Edward Island. And why has that fulfillment, or that commitment, why has it not been fulfilled? That's my first question. Can you, can you just ask your second question so we can just get both questions? Well, they're different. No, it's a different subject. Well, then that'll be your second time to speak to them. No, different, different okay, subject. speak. That's second time. Thank you. Councillor, uh, Deputy? Just one second. Go ahead. Well, what is that a planning and heritage resolution? Oh, jeez. What is it? Planning board, yeah. So that's from planning board? Yeah. Okay. Planning board. Planning number one. Okay. All right. No, thanks. I just want, want, wasn't sure if it was under protective services or, no, or planning. planning. Okay. And I know you brought that up last week or last month. And, and we, we did ask if, if, um, to get some more clarification from staff on that. So if the staff hasn't put that into my report for clarification, we'll have to ask them again for the clarification because I don't have the answer to that. So if there's no answer now, we can take it back to committee and get the clarification why we have, why we have four police officers in a resolution and, and two that are actually, yeah, so. Uh, all I got, thank you, thank you. Eleanor, do you yeah. want David Over to, to you, drop David in? Or, or Donna, or whoever <coughs> you want. Sure. Who um, wished? Okay. Yeah, uh, through the chair, I can attempt to clarify that. Hey. So, 
this is in regard to the um, overnight shelter at 15 Park Street. Uh, the condition called for an addition of two more officers for a total of four officers that were to be associated with patrols for that area. So the sum total is four, uh, but the, the um, extension on the one-year variance that was approved by council in 2023 was for an additional two for a total of four. Uh, just to clarify how that uh, resolution and condition was worded for that, that development application. Can I, can I finish that? Okay, go ahead. She's going to finish. I, thank you, Your Worship, and through to Councillor Tweel. So there is a total of four. Two are under an earlier agreement. And then just before Christmas, I believe, we completed the other agreement to satisfy the conditions uh, for that permit for the funding for the additional two officers. So that contract has now been signed with the province. So the funding, if, it's, if it hasn't arrived yet, the funding is on its way for those two other police officer positions um, for a total of four funded by the province. Okay, do you wanna add your second question? Or you wanna, okay, go ahead. So once again, yeah. it's, it's four yeah. as opposed to two. That, that there, there's compliance and they have filled, fulfilled their commitment. Could we please get a copy of the contract? Thank you. Uh, my second question is, there's been much discussion with, with regards to the uh, proposed eight-story facility down in the parking lot at the uh, Paul Clinic building, and there was a lot of concerns raised in the community, um, a lot of confusion as to um, whether or not council supported it, didn't support it. Uh, the developer at the time felt uh, he would uh, pull the application. My question is, who initiated the discussions to uh, to uh, see if there's a way that City Council could entertain this proposal? Was this initiated by the city, or was this initiated by the contractor? Who who brought back the discussions and who initiated it? Deputy. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Councillor Tweel. You'll notice in your package this evening, um, resolution number three is, and, and the report that goes with it, will outline some of the questions that you are asking this evening. But as, as the Chair of Planning and Heritage, um, uh, the, this, has, this has never come to Planning Board, so I, I can't speak to anything more of who initiated what or because it never ever got to the level to which that I chair. So it's never gotten to planning board, and so therefore it's never never gotten to council. It, it, ended, it ended in the at staff level. So I'm gonna turn this over to David or Donna that they can um, speak to the staffing part of it. But I, I'm sure you did see resolution number three this right. evening. Yep, okay. yep. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, through the chair to address your question, Councillor Tweel, um, this application for 199 Grafton Street was previously a, a, um, a request to seek an exemption to the zoning bylaw to go up to eight stories for the proposal. Um, that original application was brought through the process to, to a point, a public meeting was held, however, no recommendation was formally provided to planning board and, and by extension after that council. Uh, the applicant, in this case, APM um, uh, Commercial, uh, requested that the application be withdrawn and pulled uh, so that they could reconsider the application in the context of the official plan. So uh, motion number three, which is before you tonight, is to seek council's confirmation of that withdrawal request uh, so that the developer can circle back to the city with a new application to address both the zoning bylaw and the policies of the official plan. Uh, that concerned the site. So this was a um, developer-driven request. It wasn't a request uh, made by staff. Um, uh, staff engaged with the developer at the developer's request uh, midstream to seek a different way forward. Uh, does that help answer your question, Councillor Twill? Okay. I think it does because um, it does, you know, there's a lot of questions in the community as to uh, Again, what was the process? A lot of people weren't aware that uh, 
We didn't entertain the resolution. There was no recommendation from planning board. And then as a result of the confusion, then I, I believe I read in the media that uh, discussions were, were initiated and, and started again to find out uh, what would it take to uh, look at approving this uh, proposal provided uh, recommendation would come from staff. Uh, the developer would feel much more uh, confident uh, <coughs> moving through the process opposed to um, a recommendation not coming from staff. And I'm not trying to put staff on, 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 on the spot here, but as you know, according to the developer, from what I understand, if staff didn't recommend the development, and then if it's challenged at IRAC, <coughs> usually the uh, commissioners at IRAC go planning per principles and will come back and say, well, the city didn't follow its own bylaws and didn't follow uh, you know, its planning principles. So I'm just trying to understand how this was brought back onto, onto the table and um, was any any of those challenges taken into consideration before staff had uh, rejected recommending to planning board approval of this project going forward, just say previously, with, with the last yeah. go around? Could I just, uh, CAO or David, can you just, I think the resolution was withdrawn because it didn't fit the framework that you were working within. Now we're going to change that framework, correct? Is that in the report? Uh, th through the chair to address that, uh, Mayor Brown. So uh, the applicant opted to request to withdraw the application, not thinking that staff was going to support it at the time. No formal recommendation ever saw the light of day at, at the planning board. And by extension of that, no recommendation was therefore brought to council. Um, the applicant realized that there was policies in the official plan that they could address more broadly if they were to be allowed permission to come back and, and apply for this in a different uh, format. And that's why the withdrawal request is before you tonight, because our zoning and development bylaw uh, provides council the disposition whether or not to uh, uh, confirm a request to withdraw an application in the case where an application has already gone to a public meeting, uh, which is the case in this situation. So the zoning bylaw defers to council to make a call on whether to, to approve or deny a request to withdraw when a public meeting has been held for, in this case, a site-specific exemption application. Okay. Yeah. Councilor McKay. Sorry, I'm going to circle back and just try and, and follow up from Councillor Beck's question. I know, know uh, Councillor Yanka, or Deputy Mayor, that there's a resolution on the floor. But I guess if, if there's not going to be enough information as far as the answer from the province on some of those safety things, um, I, and I can propose it at the once we hear the resolution, but I would be recommended a deferral rather than getting people to come out to a public meeting to hear uh, a presentation on things that we don't have the information for. But I'll wait in here unless um, you want to defer that to the manager to find out if he thinks we will actually have that information. Okay. Can we read the re first resolution? Let's go to the first. Thank you, Your Worship. Is this the STR or is that number four? This is Hidden Valley, yes. Planning board resolution uh, number one. I just said the number. <laughs> be it resolved, oh, moved by Deputy Mary Yankoff, seconded by Councillor McCabe. Be it resolved that the request to amend Appendix A, future land use map of the City of Charlottetown official plan from low density residential to high density residential and amend Appendix G, zoning map of the City of Charlottetown zoning and development bylaw from low density residential single R2S zone to apartment residential R4 zone for phase three of Hidden Valley subdivision located off Malpec Road being a portion of PID 1047562 be approved to proceed to public consultation. Okay, Councillor McKinnon. <clears throat> 
Um, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I understand the city, we're experiencing a lot of housing crisis. I'm not opposed to apartment buildings. I'm not opposed to apartment buildings in my ward, but I feel that the infrastructure is not up to speed on getting ready for uh, 10 apartment <coughs> units off of Malpec Road. We have residents on the opposite side in Country View. There's no sidewalks. They're feeling landlocked. We're going to build units, 600 more units here. There's no sidewalks. There's no trails that people can go. We have apartment buildings that they went and built on Sherwood Road. Uh, people are walking over 500 meters to get to a bus stop on the side of a very busy highway. So when you look at some of the, um, in the Planning Act 3.13, the developer, um, I lost it here, sorry. No, yeah, I don't want to go to a public meeting. I'd like to see if it can be deferred, put back. I want the developer to come up with more information, more of a plan in place. Like, they have a plan, they want to build six meet, uh, units here, but I'd like the developer to come back, to say that they've met with the province with more information, and then go to a public meeting with that information. Okay, so you're asking for a deferral. You're moving? Okay, you need a second for the deferral. Do we have a second for the deferral? Now, this is just for a public consultation. No seconder, so we'll move on. Councillor Tweel, go right ahead. Just a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, just in, in, in response to uh, <laughs> Councillor McKinney, can we not achieve both simultaneously? You to get the answers that you're looking for in consultation with the province to see what commitment they will uh, fulfill when it comes to uh, infrastructure requirements, and yet still have our planning uh, planning meeting, public consultation, and go ahead with that, and maybe someone from the province can show up at the public meeting and and uh, illustrate uh, what uh, what they're prepared to do, so that uh, the residents who show up that evening will have the opportunity to have all of that information at the same time. It's just a suggestion. Good idea. So, does that come through planning, deputy, or is that? Is that something we do, Eleanor or David? Thank you, Your Worship. That's something that planning can take away and ask for that information to be available at the public meeting, should yeah. council choose for the public meeting uh, to go forward. Okay. Okay. Questions called? On the resolution to go to a public consultation. No, there was no seconder to defer. That's why we're moving ahead. Okay, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, all those against? So it's eight to one. Councillor Duran is in conflict, and Councillor McKinnon opposed. Okay. That's I'm going to try to get the information. Yeah, she passed that on. Good. Yeah. Okay. Number two. Just Councillor two. Councillor Duran. No. no. Uh, planning board resolution number two, moved by Deputy Mary Yankoff, seconded by Councillor McCabe. Be it resolved that the request to amend Appendix C approve site specific exemptions of the City of Charlottetown Zoning and Development Bylaw as it pertains to the property located at 421 St. Peter's Road, PID 464586, in the low density residential R2 zone in order to allow for a double lane drive through to be built with respect to an established coffee shop located on an abutting parcel in the highway commercial zone C2. PID 192187 be approved to proceed to public consultation. Okay. So Councillor Tweel and Councillor McKay. So the question I have is, uh, proceed to the public consultation process to change the zoning, right? We're changing the zoning here. Uh, what if council was to, uh, okay, site specific, but nonetheless, if council was to prove this after the public consultation meeting, uh, what other permitted uses would the property owner be eligible to uh, 
to pursue? Or is this strictly just for the drive-through and nothing else? And that would be uh, written into a developer's agreement. So uh, I'm looking at this uh, uh, specifically. Again, I'll reiterate. Even though it's site specific, what other permitted uses with the uh, developer property owner be eligible for? Okay. Deputy. So with the, with I'll give I'll give it a whirl and then I'll move it over to David to clarify as well. So the site specific I can't even say it. Site specific. Okay. Um, is just for the actual. Um, in, in order to get into the drive-through. They already have an as of right to do anything, like the, the, the actual building and the addition um, to the space that they're creating, it's, it's an as of right. So they don't have to get any more permission. That's already zoned for a long list of stuff you'd see in the zoning and development bylaw that, would, that they would be permitted to put in that space. Uh, I can't list all those things, but there's there's a lot of them. But the, so so tonight, um, the the only thing they're applying for is to specifically be able to have um, a two lane drive through, and that's the only thing they're applying for. It's my understanding. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. Yep. Yeah. Does that make sense, Councillor Twill? David, do you want to? Sure. Uh, through the Chair, Councillor Twill, to, ver to uh, confirm um, Deputy Mayor Yankoff's completely correct. The parcel in question is a separate parcel that's beside the main site. The main site's in the C2 zone, which contains the existing uh, gas station and accessory uses, as well as the existing single lane drive through. The adjacent parcel that they're going to punch part of the expanded drive through lanes through is in the R2 zone. Uh, so the, the request here is a site-specific exemption within the existing R2 uh, to permit that, that drive-through to be built through that adjacent parcel, which has different zoning than the main site. So the R2 allows a limited number of residential uses. Uh, this request is to allow a site-specific exemption to, <coughs> over and above those limited amount of residential uses, allow for the drive-through to be built through that R2 zoned uh, parcel, which is abutting the main the main site. So this really only limits, the intent is only for a drive-through. That's what the owners wish to achieve here. And that's why this request is limited to that very specific uh, land use uh, and no, no other land uses. So. Councilor Cape. Thank you, Your Worship, um, and thank you. So I'm going to come back again now and, and just maybe ask the direct question if you think we will have the information around the safety and, um, and entrances. I know when we went into this uh, roundabout project, we had to have the exit on Angus Drive because they were so concerned with ins and outs, and now they're proposing a third entrance in to get into this proposed site-specific uh, drive-through. So I guess, do we think, because this public meeting is coming fairly quick, do we think we'll have the answer to some of those questions? And the traffic study also to point out was done in 2021, I believe, prior to the roundabout expansion that was put onto the highway. So there might be some uh, change in numbers with regards to what, where we're at as far as if queuing and stuff on the main highway there. It's still fairly congested every morning even though it's much better with the roundabouts, but it, it can still get backed up fairly quick. So those are some things. That if we're not gonna have those answers, I'm gonna put a proposal on the floor to, to defer till we do. I don't feel like we need to bring people out to a meeting when those will be some of the questions we're going to want to have answers to. Deputy? Um, thank you, Councillor McCabe. Um, so I think I will defer this to David um, to see um, where he is in that process to see whether or not he's gotten that information from the, um, from the province. So. I could defer that to you. Mr. Gundrum. Thank you. Uh, through the Chair, Councillor McCabe, we don't have that information yet from the province. However, the public meeting won't happen until Tuesday, January 23rd, so two weeks from tomorrow. Uh, we are planning to circulate letters to the residents tomorrow, put the letters in the mail to send them out. Um, I think two weeks is ample time that we should have the answers we need from the province at this rate that we can be properly prepared uh, for that meeting on January 23rd. So. Councilor Bernard, and then Councilor Twill. Thank you, Your Worship. I'm just uh, so I'm under the impression here that that the drive-through that's located there now they want to make it a double lane. Mm -hmm. 
So it's not another entrance. It's the same entrance, just make it a double so they can get more cars. Now it's a third entrance. It's a third entrance. So it's a third separate entrance? Yeah. So where is it going? Because it's the drive through. There's, there's a drive through going into it now. So my understanding from this is they're looking to make it a. Well, there's only one place to order a donut and a coffee. So they've got to be. Just so where's, where's this other? Please go ahead. Thank you. So, Councillor Bernard, thank you for your question. If you look at the drawing, you'll see that there, were th there was the entrance and the exit. And yep. it, you're right, the same entrance is the double drive-through. Yep. But then if you look at the drawing, they created a third, uh, a third little area. And so the question was asked Perfect. by a resident member, why is this third one here? Why is there now a third way that you can get in when there was only supposed to be an entrance and an exit? And so the answer we got back from the staff was that's up to the province to approve that third entrance. And we had oh. concerns because that's a third one that wasn't there before. But we're, they're not asking us for that. They're asking to make the, to make the drive through a double lane. Yes, that's correct. Right. So, but I think the, the concerns the resident members had as well as the, as the councillors that are on that committee were that they weren't, they weren't comfortable proceeding to public consultation if the province was going to allow a, a third entrance in, then, then, then they had concerns and they wanted that addressed first. Although that's not part of the developer's application, it is part of the, the provincial um, for them to either approve or not approve. And so the members had concerns over that third spot. And if I've missed anything on that, David, um, um, please um, chime in. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Toyo. No, I'm not. I, I, okay, did you? I, I still have a follow-up because this resolution has to do, at least for me, it's it's the stacking of cars you want to get off the bypass highway. You have a single lane drive-through, and they're trying to double lane double to it. get traffic from not stacking it on the bypass highway. That would be the concern I would think that I would have, and most people in the area. So now, I'm, what I'm hearing is they're talking to something else that the province has a jurisdiction, yes or no, but we're going to hinge on that before we make a decision on this. And to me, that doesn't make any sense. This is what they're asking for the city. This is our jurisdiction. Do we want to have a double lane or not? So to move forward to the public consultation for that. Deputy. I've got nothing else. Um, if, if, um, if, David. if David wants anything more, I mean, Councillor Bernard makes perfect sense. That's not, it's not no. what, what, what the resident members and the committee was asking for does have nothing to do with the with the application, except for that if the province grants a third entrance in, the resident members and the and the and the and the, the councillors that are on that planning board had concerns, and they just wanted some clarification around that in case the residents at the public meeting asked the same questions, and that at least then we'd be able to say well. Yes, the province has, in, has done their research and they believe it is safe or, or whatever, whatever the conclusion might be for the province's justification to say yes or no to that third entrance way. That's as far as I know. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Is that clear, David? Donna? Yep. No, that's clear. Yes? Yes. Okay. Yes. Councilor Twill. So with the third entrance and the... Uh, doubling of the driveway, as you see with all the Tim Hortons. Uh, obviously, they're trying to uh, mirror what, what's taking place and trying to get the uh, customers uh, through through the drive throughs that much quicker. So it's, it's an entrance only, and the traffic will be exiting on Angus Drive. Correct? Okay. So that's, that's what we're asked to entertain at the public meeting where the residents have the opportunity <laughs> to come out and either approve or disapprove of uh, more traffic in Angus Drive. Correct? Uh, that's correct, Councillor. Okay, yeah. so um, having said all of that, if you look at Angus Drive, it was a residential street. And now, it's become part of uh, highway commercial. There are certain sections 
of Angus Drive that has now become highway commercial. It's not a residential street anymore. So what is the city prepared to do to compensate the residents for this uh, tremendous influx of traffic on Angus Drive, which was from a historical point of view. I know residents live there for 50 years now. Never had to experience this. Uh, I've seen uh, huge numbers of increased traffic, especially you know on the holidays and other days that uh, some of the other businesses that are closed in the city. So w what do we do as a city council and a city corporation, what do we do to compensate the residents for all this traffic on a residential street because we previously approved a resolution <coughs> to approve that traffic on Angus Drive. I mean, that's a residential street. I've never seen anything like it in my lifetime. But nonetheless, is there, is there going to be any type of compensation? <laughs> it's going to be awarded to the residents to have to experience this uh, tremendous influx of highway commercial traffic on a residential street. Like, Okay, Councillor Twill, we're voting on a resolution to go to a public consultation. That could come up right now. Uh, it's to go to a public no, consultation. I, yeah, I know, but before yeah. I vote to go to the public consultation process, Mr. Mayor, yeah. I'd, I'd like to know, and I, I think the residents need to know, like, how much more traffic is there going to be? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, I'm not a traffic engineer. No. I, like I said previously, I'm just a layperson. But, like, like <coughs> this is highway traffic on a residential street that should never went there to begin with. Mm. There should have been other, other options and other opportunities explored. Like some of the residents said, you know, you want to put in roundabouts, go ahead, construct them all day long up and down St. Peter's Road, but just leave the residential street alone. Well, that didn't happen. And now they're going to experience more traffic. Yeah. And I have to question, you know, whether that's fair. I understand what the businessman's trying to do, but, but what about the quality of life for the residents on, on on Angus Drive, like, what recourse do they have? Yeah. Or it's just, ah, take it or leave it. Yeah. Councilor Bernard, and then Councilor McCabe. Um, I guess looking at the picture, I'd like to know where the thought came from that there was another entrance being made. That's always been open. They're just putting in a bit of a barricade by the entrance that goes into the drive through now. That entrance has always been open off St. Peter's Road. That's not another entrance. Okay. Councilor McCabe. Well, I guess then it'll be great when we get to public consultation and we get to see these questions and hear the proposed plan more formal. And as far as um, residents on Angus Drive as the rep councillor that represents the area, I've heard both. I've heard people that are, are interested and haven't noticed a lot, and I've heard people that certainly don't want more. So I guess that's what the benefit of going to a public consultation is, is you get people out and they get to express their thoughts about what they need. And I know Public Works has identified Angus Drive as getting a sidewalk or a multi-purpose path this year as a supplement to all the new traffic and stuff on the street, so that's a positive. But anyway, I think it's time that we try and move yeah. on. It's yeah. public consultation at this point. You calling the question? Aye. Okay, calling the question. Okay, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, uh, those against, 8-2. Councillors Twill and Duran. Okay. Want to go to the next one? Uh, planning Board Resolution Number 3, moved by Deputy Mayor Yankoff, seconded by Councillor McCabe. Be it resolved that was with respect to section uh, 3.10.3 .3 of the Zoning and Development Bylaw that the applicants, APM Commercial Royal LePage, be permitted to withdraw their application site specific exemption request that concerns the property located at 199 Grafton Street, PID 342790, for which a public meeting was previously held on November 28th, 2023. Pretty, pretty easy. Question? Question called. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Well, look at that, 10-0. Okay, 10-0. Now, the STR is next, so that's Councillors Beck and Twill are in conflict. Thank you. Uh, planning and Heritage Resolution Number 4, moved by Deputy Mary Yankoff, seconded by Councillor McCabe. 
Be it resolved that council approves the proposal to one, permit short-term rental operators who, prior to the adoption of the zoning and development bylaws uh, amendments regarding short-term rentals on February 14th, 2022, operated a short-term rental and hold a current Tourism Industry Act TIA license, or are eligible for a TIA license to be considered a legal non-conforming use. And secondly, uh, that these le legal non-conforming uses be required to apply for a short-term license um, and a short-term rental license and satisfy all other applicable requirements of the city's newly established short-term rental licensing bylaw. Deputy, do you want to say anything or do you want to pass it on to our managers to just one second? Um, so it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, if any counselors have any questions, I certainly am happy to answer any, any questions that they may have. Okay, seeing none. Question? Question's okay, questions called. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, 8-0, counselors, uh, no, counselors Tweel and Beck in conflict. back in conflict. Yes, sir. Okay. Is that it, Deputy? Thank you very much. Yes. Just before you go, Deputy, if you go to page 52, these are the numbers I like to see. So the end of December, uh, total building construction value, dollar values was $156 million. And compared to the year before, we were at 202. So little dip, but still not bad. Thank you for the department for making that happen. Okay. Okay. So I have public works. And I see the chief engineer is here. Uh-huh. Gouser's back's coming back in. Okay. Sorry there. I'll just... Click yeah. Thank you, Your Worship. <clears throat> I'm going to excuse myself after this report, too. I'm not feeling 100 percent. It seems yes. to be getting a little bit worse. Um, we, as a committee, met on the 13th of December for Public Works. The Civic Board for Persons with Disabilities met on December 19th. For the last two months, um, we haven't had any minutes from the Civic Board for Persons with Disabilities in our package. And I, I don't know. I'd like to see that, uh, you know, when people are taking the time to come and meet, that. Um, we have to tighten that up. So, Scott, I, I need some help uh, figuring out what staff person is going to help uh, transition that so that council members can see what's being discussed with, at that committee meeting or at that uh, advisory board. Uh, there are no resolutions, believe it or not. I guess Christmas was good to us, but I'm here to answer any questions from our, my report, if there are any. And Councillor McCabe, I know what the both committees, the Senior Engagement Advisory Committee and the, I know, I know, but, and the Youth Engagement Advisory Committee, those fall under Parks, Recreation, Leisure. They have a staff person at both of those meetings, so uh, hopefully we can find someone. Just one second, I just want to get John there. Go ahead. We've changed um, the time of the meeting so that we could accommodate having a staff person there. Both, we do have someone that takes minutes at our meeting, but it's really helpful when there's someone that can take that information and make sure that we get it into the package. Thank you kindly. Councilor Bernard, Councilor Duran, and Councilor Matard. Just a typo. Um, motion to move into closed session, moved by the mayor and seconded by the mayor. I, I didn't think you could do that. <laughs> oh. Where's that, where's that uh, under what minutes? Motion to move into closed session. Just a tight, there must be, there must be something else a second. Yeah, I, can, I can't move anything from here. No. I can't move anything or second. Okay, Councilor McCabe, Councilor McCabe, just one sec, you might have something to say. I don't, other than thank you for pointing that out, and we'll make sure that those get fixed. Yeah, please correct those, Chief Engineer. Councilor Drawn, Councilor Matart, Councilor Beck. Thank you, Mayor Brown, um, and thank you to the manager and, and the chair. We had some concerns the, in December, you know, I think it was 21st of December, 22nd, on a cold day. Uh, the engineering 
department or surveying department came up and put pins <coughs> on our driveways in, on Cedar Avenue and stakes and that caused a lot of turmoil um, within the, the street once again. And I know the manager gave us an email today uh, saying they, they will do a public consultation, maybe a meeting or something. But the, the issue is where nobody knows what's going on, and, and myself included, that these stakes, you know, there were huge uh, indications or indentations on people's properties. And I know if you're looking for a sidewalk, uh, it would be close to the street, but but the the right of way was right in the middle of these people's properties. You know, they thought they were going to lose their gardens, their front yards. You know, and it just caused a lot of turmoil over Christmas time. And and you know, I, I appreciate we're now going to go to public consultation or invite the public to a to a meeting where we can discuss what the plan is on what side of the street uh, a sidewalk goes. And you know. We, I have to bring this up because a lot of times, you know, the average person that's lived on the street or in the community for 20, 25, 50 years, you know, this is a big issue to them. So it causes them a lot of turmoil, a lot of grief. Um, you know, when they see these pins coming up, they don't know if they're going to lose their front yards and uh, the phone calls start coming in. So this is something in the future that you know, maybe we can give some indication out to the public before this happens so they have an idea, an idea of what, what's coming down. And, and also, you know, I know the, the uh, expected sidewalk is going to be in the, in, the, in the vicinity of 900 and some thousand dollars that's proposed for, for Cedar Avenue. And I, and I go back to, you know, the, the, the street doesn't really want it. And maybe I can be proved wrong. Uh, when we do go to a public meeting, but back in 2017, we proposed and did engineering work for a sidewalk on Elizabeth Avenue where we connect McKay Drive and Parkview Drive. That doesn't have, they have two sidewalks going up the street and they don't have a connector sidewalk. So I've asked for that and I've looked at the five-year plan and it's not on that. And I know I brought it up last year when one of the residents said, I've been talking to three different mayors and I think four different councillors and we still can't get this done. So I ask that this be you know, taken up to, to satisfy this area of, of the community rather than spending all the money on Cedar where we, we don't seem to want the sidewalk. And another, another quick question I'd ask is, is the projects, and I, and I give you, you know, a praise for trying to get ahead of the paving to, to get the capital budget passed earlier so we can go out to tenders. But I also know, like, there's a $17 million carryover, and we're looking at, like, a $44 million expense. And I'm thinking to myself, well, if there's $17 million, there's major projects that we didn't complete last year. Is this going to be completed this year? Are we going to go to next year and not complete what we have this year because we're comp trying to complete last year? I know there's big projects, Spencer Drive, the Eastern Gateway Plan, all these projects that even University Avenue Plan that we never completed. So I, I just, when I look at this, we're going to approve more money. Let, I'm just asking, I guess maybe not, this is not the time to bring it up, maybe we can bring it up in budget, is to kind of control what we're, what we're doing. The, you know, it's nice to have vision, but we have to have reality too to, to, to see where we're going. So <coughs> I guess that's a, that's a question or a number of questions um, that hopefully you can answer. Thank you. I can guarantee I can't answer all of them, but I'll try and pick, pick through a little bit. Um, and yes, we did receive an email that the staff is going to talk to or try to gather your residents in for a community meeting. I guess, you know, in discussion, there's criteria that we've approved as far as where we put different projects and stuff, and it's up to the staff to determine operationally why they want to put certain sidewalks. That'll be the opportunity for your residents to hear. Why Cedar? Well, I think because Cedar's got the park. And it's to try and make safe access for people to be able to get to public spaces in our city. So hopefully once Scott has the opportunity to bring residents together and justify why they are picking Cedar Avenue for a particular project, um, 
it, they might understand it, they might be able to ask questions and reduce some of their own anxieties around that. <laughs> as far as where they're putting the stakes and stuff for surveying, I'm assuming they're, we're not certainly going into people's private property with sidewalks, are we, Scott? I don't think we're doing that, are we? I worship through to, uh, uh, to the chair. No, so likely what the stakes are showing are the property boundaries. So part of these surveys, we always want to get the legal boundaries of where the properties are. So many folks believe, you know, they own right out the street. They do not. They, depending on the street, they own, um, the city might own quite far in. It just depends on the street and the, uh, the, the, the public right of way width in that area. So that's likely the stakes you're seeing is the property boundary. Um, uh, and that's all that is, is just so that, uh, they're marking it out, so then their topo, uh, when we say topographic uh, surveyor comes out, he knows how far to survey from side to side and when he's picking up all the points for, that they need for design work. And I would also agree with Councillor Duran. I think we always can do a better job communicating. These are proposed mm -hmm. and projected projects that still have to come to capital or to mm -hmm. our budget to be approved. So right now, this is what their wish list is, and eventually, once we approve the money, it will be determined where these sidewalks will eventually go. I also agree that we have to be realistic with the money we're going to use, that we should use it. We shouldn't be approving money for projects that we're not going to even get to for, and I know there's things that go on, but I hopefully will do better with this new budget process to make it more realistic. Did I miss something else, Councillor Duran? No, go, go follow up there. Hold on, just one second, hold on. Your life. And I appreciate that and, and, and the manager to have the, to the public to come in to see what we're going to do. But in this case, we still have the stakes there, like which causes people that are coming back from vacation to say, what the heck is going on? You know, like, do they need to be there? These metal posts, or I guess they're, uh, what are survey markers, they've been smashed into people's land. We just, <laughs> we just finished paving the walkway in the park, a beautiful walkway. And I go up there to walk the dog, and here is one of the big metal markers pounded right in the middle of the walkway. Like, would that have to be there for a common sense person? Couldn't you move it a foot off one way or another? Or does it have to be right in a freshly paved walkway? That, you know, that was more of a peed off sort of thing rather than a concern. But. Maybe you could answer that, okay. Scott, or, or maybe Julie. It has to go exactly there. Councillor McCabe, McCabe, do you want to go through the chief engineer? Or do you want to take it on? Well, I think you have to ask the process that Julie's going to go exactly there, first of all. And second of all, I'm sure anybody would have to be something, maybe they had a visual impairment or something, to put a stake in the middle of a freshly paved asphalt. But I sure, has have you guys received, Scott, any information that there's been a stake in the mid of, middle of a freshly paved asphalt strip? Uh, your Worship, through the chair, no, this is news to me. I wasn't aware of that. It's right. something we can look at. Absolutely. Uh, I'm not sure what it was for. We can investigate, and it's a consultant that we hired to do it, so we will definitely have a discussion with them on it. Council Patard. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, to the chair, um, with the recent... Um, Terms and six terms and conditions with the Park Street shelter. Uh, one of those conditions were the it was to erect a fence which would create a pathway to have a new entrance into the shelter area. Uh, I have seen the fence. The fence is erected. It appears to be uh, ready to go. My question is to the chair through to the manager: Is do we know if the implementation of the old entrance to the new entrance has occurred. It does not appear to be the case. It still seems to be active in the current area. That's my first question. My second question is still in regard to the terms and conditions. Uh, one of them was the province was to provide cleanup crew uh, for the affected area, uh, which would then um, ostensibly allow for city duty crew not to perform those duties of cleaning up uh, drug paraphernalia, needles, hazardous material. Uh, do we know that that has been implemented? And if so, uh, has the duty crew and city staff been asked to take a step back and report those areas to uh, the province through some type of uh, mechanism to allow for that? So that's my two questions. Councilor McKay. Those would be more uh, operational issues that aren't discussed with me, so I'll turn those over to the chief engineer. Sure. Chief engineer. Your Worship, uh, through the councillor. So um, I'm not, I was 
uh, told the gate was supposed to be active, so I would have to in, uh, follow up with that one. Um, and same with the cleanup crew. I was advised that they were supposed to be active by now, um, and so we will look into the status of that and get back to you on that one. Now, just to your point back to duty crew taking a step back, at the end of the day, the cleanup crew only goes, and they believe it's only once a day to patrol the areas. So in the event of emergency, something's found, our crews would still, you know, a needle in the middle of the sidewalk somewhere um, outside the regular hours of the cleaning crew, we would likely go and clean it up as quickly as we can. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, thank you to the manager. Um, so I guess I just want to be clear that is there is there a procedure in place that allows for the, we'll say, the provincial cleanup crew to be doing their work throughout the area of influence as opposed to city crew who, yes, might come upon something and then take the liberty of removing that, obviously, for various reasons. But is that part and parcel to the work that they do now continuing as they have up to a certain point, we'll say up to December 16th, when it would have been the responsibility of the city to, to go through the area and to <coughs> ensure that those cleanups were occurring? Just one second, Councilman Cape. Oh, wait now. Get pretty good at this. Go ahead there, Councilman Cape. Uh, you have to press your button back on. I think Councilor Tweed will turn it off. Okay. <laughs> I agree. I agree with Councilor Duran, and I agree when we go into these uh, conditions when we're working with the province, and, and our role is to follow up to make sure that things are done properly. Councilor, sorry, my tart. Um, so I know we're busy, and I know we have a lot in our plates, but that's when we go into an agreement. We agree to follow up with what we say we're going to follow up with. So that's got to trump and take a priority. I know Councillor Yankoff and I met with residents that were concerned we're, they were still waiting for fences to go up. So if the fences aren't going back up or if they're going back up, either they need to go back up or it needs to be communicated that they're not going back up. We, we are agreeing to do this, so we need to do what we say we're going to do. That's the only thing we have control over at this point. So, Scott, I think we need to make sure that that desks get swept and we find out whether or not the province is doing the needle clean up or is that still on our staff as well as the fence and the entrance and exit. Okay. Councillor Norman Beck, Ward 3. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I, I just have a question about the, uh, it goes back to the, uh, I don't know, Clause H, I guess, if you will, about the no parking in the uh, bike lanes that we're looking to add to our bylaw. And I, I know that it was uh, uh, indicated in the report that uh, there are some identified areas of, it, of concern. Um, I guess I have a, a, a question. Um, do we, because uh, I have some areas of concern in my ward that I would be, I know that residents have expressed to me before about this very issue. And I'm really glad to see that we're putting this clause in. Uh, I guess what I'm wondering is, do we have, I know it was mentioned in here, we'll be working with police to identify the areas, we'll be, uh, there are some in mind. I guess uh, I, I would, I'm, I guess I'm just wondering, do we have a preliminary list started? And if so, is that available or is that something that I, I could see or any of us could see? And uh, do we have the opportunity to potentially add to the list in terms of recommendations of areas? Because uh, it was something that I, I wouldn't mind seeing based on conversations that I've had with residents in my ward. Thank you. Okay, uh, I don't know that's, if I that's, that's for Councilor McCabe to answer. That's, she can that's, answer that's, that's, that yeah, she can answer that. that. Councilor McCabe, can you answer that, please? I can answer these questions because I've been part of the discussions at committee level, but I don't mind Scott answering them either. And I, Scott, those specific ones around where and, and the criteria for bike lanes for sure. But we are responsible for the signage, and you work collaboratively with police in order to determine the safety of where those issues are, I'm assuming. Is that correct there, Mr. Just for the public record? <laughs> you're, you're correct, we worship. Thank you, Councilman McCabe. Follow up there? Do you have a follow up there? Okay, you have to press your button. Where are you at? Okay. So I guess I guess my question is, can I see where, or can we have access to that? Can we see that? And can we have discussions about potentially adding to it? I guess that's really my question. Yep. Councilor McCabe, do you want to defer it? Okay, defer to the chief, chief engineer, chief engineer. 
Your Worship, through Councillor Beck. Um, so that's why we haven't uh, finished up and brought the bylaw amendment to council yet. We want to have that list established so council did get to see it so everyone has all the information on what they're voting on before it comes. And just with the holiday season and another number of other priorities, we just haven't been able to get to it just yet. Uh, but I'm hoping hopefully next month, uh, hopefully February, if not March at the latest, that we'll be here uh, bringing that amendment uh, to that bylaw. And of course, the list showing uh, where those uh, streets with uh, designated bike lanes are. Um, and where we will be asking the police to uh, patrol a little bit more, um, especially during the summer months. Council Ramsey. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, thank you, Councillor McCabe, for your report. Just two questions. They're not as formal as the rest of them, so I'll let you off easy. One is uh, the overnight parking ban came in effect November, I believe it was. And <coughs> I've been getting a few phone calls, how cars have been left on the street overnight. Some in Ward 5, which I represent. In fact, they've been there since last summer. And the snow plow goes around them and all that. I thought that the snow plow was supposed to get a hold of somebody as they're making the turn, or, or you know. And then one street, as they're making the turn, the two cars are there. So now the snow is all built up around them and everything like that. I would like that looked into, if it's possible. Like, uh, And then the other one is, Mr. Adams, uh, through you, Ma Madam Chair, is that uh, I sent you an email today about the garden home. They're looking, there's a crosswalk right there from the garden home to head down across the street on North River Road. There's workers and there's residents and everything. They have a hard time crossing that, so Jason Lee, in fact, he, who owns it, he's wondering if we can get sort of some type of flashing light so the traffic can see those people to allow them to cross that main busy street. So I'd just like to put that in your in your notes. Thank you very much. Councilor Cape, you got that down? Yeah. <clears throat> and I know that they're working on the operational process but with snowplow operators, and um, they're doing some work internally around how to better improve that moving forward. We have a very, very fastly growing city and lots of new-to-Canada people with cars and maybe having to learn the processes and understanding how things work. And they're trying to tighten up who's responsible to call and how they're going to call. So they're aware and they're working through some of those. You can respond more to that if I can. And it's and then the other would be operational. So you'll determine whether or not that fits. Uh, your Worship, through to Councilor Ramsey. So the, the snow plowing situation, yes, as, as Councilor McCabe alluded to, um, we are, we're in the process of making some changes to how we do it. Um, we have found, especially this year, uh, there are just way more cars parked on the street than we've ever seen. Um, and the challenge has been getting enough tow, uh, tow operators in the city to tow all those vehicles. Uh, when you look at it, to tow a single vehicle can take almost an hour round trip to pick it up downtown, take it to the uh, site, and for the truck to make it back downtown. So when you when you factor in one one tow truck and only pick up one or two vehicles at a time, um, it's a very slow process. So we're working on a plan right now to bring in additional forces to be able to tow vehicles during the evening hours. Uh, so that's a plan that we hope to see the the next uh, our next big storm um, roll out. Um, and then in, in, in uh, regards to your other note, uh, yes, I, I responded to your email earlier today. It's on our list to, to review um, uh, for additional enhancements uh, for the upcoming year. Okay. Uh, uh, Councillor? Well, the overnight parking, you said it's... These are people that have been living in the same home for years. Like, these are not like new people that moved here, things along that line. It's just that I just, like if everyone else got to put their car in the driveway, like they should do, because this is right at a corner of a certain street that like all of a sudden the car is filled in now, the, the two vehicles that have been sitting there all summer. It, would it be possible that maybe someone from police, and I should be asking that when I get up, or, or, or the public works to get a hold of these people and saying, I'm sorry, your car's got to be moved. I'm sorry to give people a heads up, and saying, you know, the, it's been there since November 14th or 15th, or, you know, the bylaws there, because we're all getting alerts on our phones that have them. And it says, like, no overnight parking, like for, like Wednesday night, for example, or something, if there, if there has to be snow removal. That's all I'm asking. If, if these people can sort of get a heads up, because maybe some of them don't have that alert, and think that I parked there all summer, I'm going to park there all winter. Yeah. I mean, they can't get the cars out there now. 
is there that much snow above it. Yeah. Thank you. Councilor McCabe. I think uh, I just had this discussion. I can't remember who told me that tonight. Is that there is a lot of effort made to reach people and stuff to try to let them know that their cars are in the way and they need to get them moved. I don't think there anybody wants to go out and start towing people's <laughs> vehicles. First of all, I don't even think there's enough tow trucks with the amount of influx of cars that we now have parked on the road. I think every, we're feeling it everywhere. So again, they're working on talking about how to tighten up the process to ensure safety and making sure our streets are able to be cleaned. Deputy Mayor. And Councilor Bernard. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Councilor McKay, for your report. Just to circle back so that it's in the minutes. Yes. Is it my understanding that you had um, asked if the manager would also follow up on the folks that live on Park and Beach, or I guess it's called Park now, that Beach. the fences were not replaced? <coughs> and I just want to make sure that that was going to be followed up on too as part of all of those. Um, of the items that needed to be satisfied by the the date in December, because there's a number of houses along there that the fences are still not back up. Deputy, uh, Deputy, thank you. And uh, what I understood, uh, the, the fences that are going to border certain properties that were taken down when the project was done were on. Were they not be on order? Were we waiting for something to come back to be able to re re put these fences mm -hmm. back up? on people's properties. That's what I always understood, was told to me. Uh, Your Worship, uh, through the chair, I guess if I'm understanding correctly, is it the fence that's between the back side of the properties that are back onto Joe Giz Park? Are we talking that fence? So that fence is uh, under Parks and Rec. I've been talking to Frank on that one. That had to be removed because it was severely damaged because all the trees that fell during Fiona, that had just gotten cleaned out probably sometime early December. Um, and I think Frank may have more of an update on the status and getting that fence up. So that is a city fence that needs to be reinstalled. The provincial portion that was a requirement under the, um, the, the um, resolution that passed here at Council, uh, the province has met the requirement on where, those, where the fence is installed. Oh, good. Okay. Councilor Bernard. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Councilor McCabe, I'm wondering, I think it was September, we passed the, rescinded a resolution to uh, put the elevator in Hillsborough Community Center because the price was too high. I think it was 1.3 million or something. That was seemed exorbitant. So we agreed to put it off and we would retender it, see if we can get better prices. Um, I haven't heard anything since, and I noticed here in your capital budget that um, it's still a half million and uh, no, in, no other, uh, it's a carryover and there's been no more money added to it. So has anything been done? We, got, we have a community center there that we're running out. People use it now. I understand the chairlift's not working, so people with disabilities cannot get upstairs. They arrive there for an event, and they, they're, they're embarrassed. So is there any word on, on when that's going to happen? Councilor McCabe. We haven't seen any retendering at our committee level for the elevator, so I'll let okay. the... Uh, Chief Engineer uh, Scott Chief Adams. Uh, your Worship, through the Council mm -hmm. Bernard. Uh, thank you for the question. Yes, so it's currently tendered right now. It closes January 18th. Um, what we have adjusted is a lot of the, we, we t put a quite a tight time frame around the last tender to get it done quickly and that's where we think a lot of the prices, because it was a little bit later in the year, a lot of contractors were already pretty booked for the year. Um, that's why we only saw one bidder in a very high price. Um, so um, yes, yeah, so we're waiting for bids to come back in on the 18th as of now. I know they just did, they had a number of contractors that did a tour of the facility with the consultant to look at the work. So we're uh, quite hopeful that we're going to have uh, a few bids this time um, and hopefully much lower prices than we saw the first time around. Okay. Follow up, Councilor Bernard. Thank you. That's Thank you. Okay. Deputy Mayor. <laughs> So thank you, uh, Councillor McKay. So is it my understanding, getting back to these these residents, that so this now we have to go through Parks and Rec to find out for the residents? And, and, and if that's the case, and sure, I'll ask the question at Parks and Rec, but I mean, it's just, I mean, these residents have been waiting. They had no idea that this was a Parks and Rec thing. They thought this was all part of the, of the, of the, of the um, agreement to get these fences back up. So, I don't know, it's just that whole silo thing again. So if, if, if you're telling me that I have to ask Parks and Rec, that's great. But if you could just confirm that to me so I know where to direct my question next. Thank you. Councilor McCabe. I'm telling you that we need a roadmap to know who's responsible for what and who's going to do what. Oh, no, it's not that complicated. Sure just to answer the question. What, what's, what's the answer? You just ask for an answer. I'm not, I'm not to the answer yet, but thank you. Yeah, thank you. I, the CAO had her mic on, and I think maybe were you okay. going to address that? CAO. 
Um, thank you, Worship. I actually have a different point, so I don't know if you want to finish speaking to that. I don't know where the fence is. Okay. Okay. But the question was asked from Parks and Recreation, so Councillor Tweel's on the lineup. Go ahead there, Councillor Tweel. Well, we had a discussion today at Parks and Recreation regarding the trees that could come down and the cleanup that was uh, completed. And from what I understand, according to our manager, it was uh, a coordinated approach. It was done collectively with the involvement of uh, three different departments, Public Works, Parks and Recreation, Environment Sustainability. So I can tell you, from Parks and Recreation's perspective, we don't act in silos. We reach out and we here, work here. with all departments. Here, here. That's the approach here, here. that we take in Parks and Rec. Right, Frank? <laughs> right on, Frankie boy. <laughs> so yes, it was discussed. Councilor, Councilor Twill. It was discussed. Three departments are working on it. That's okay. The work's complete. Councilman Tart. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, you know, I'd like to, I, I'm, I'm feeling a bit confused about the fencing around the Park Street area. I've certainly been, as the Councilor of the Ward, I'm very familiar with all fences down there, where they are, where they're not, and where they should be. Uh, so there is a lot of activity that's happening there. The fence that you're referring to along the backside of, of Joe Giz Park was uh, destroyed through Fiona and the trees and that has been cleaned up late December. Um, I've spoken to all the residents in that area regarding that back fence and when the weather permits a new fence will go over the ground is frozen now and they can't get machinery in there so uh, but nonetheless the area has been cleaned up. There are some other fences along the property line uh, on the empty lots at the two at the end of the where the uh, turn happens there so there's some fencing there and of course the provincial fencing and then there was some fencing regarding what originally would have ran directly right across Beach Street at one point in time, which is likely still a bit of a bone of contention around that particular fence. And you know, I've, I've spoken to the manager of Public Works on that on numerous times. So uh, I'd like to know exactly what it is we're referring to when it comes to the fence aspect, and I can help navigate that and see if we can sort out what that is. So thank you. No, I, I think the, the, the chair of Public Works, the chair of chair of uh, Parks Recreation, and the chair of uh, Environment and sustainability are working together. So, it's are you getting much negative feedback, uh, Councillor Attard? Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, as I indicated, I just think there's a couple different facets here. That one particular stretch of fence is between those three entities. There are other aspects of that general area where fencing is um, of a concern. So I don't want to lump them all into that same one. I've been working with uh, the manager of public works on uh, trying to find out information about various other areas where fencing did or did not occur and what it looks like and why doesn't it look like this and so on and so forth. So if there's out outstanding issues around there, um, I'll certainly follow up with the residents and bring it back to this, uh, to the Parks and Recreation, or sorry, to public works if there's further discussion on that. Thank you. Councilor Beck. <coughs> Uh, thank you for that, Your Worship. Um, maybe just a question for, uh, maybe through the chair to, to, to Scott. Uh, I was just looking at the PCI ratings that we had on the, on the report, and it's great that we have this dedicated system or whatever it is to come up with there, because we always have a question about road conditions and worst to first and all that sort of stuff. I guess my question is, it was, there was a, an aggregate or an overall rating of 73. What does that say about our streets? Is that a good thing? Are we, are we in good shape overall? Like, I, I know there's, we got some in the 5% category. We've got, we got some issues. But when you say a bit of 73, what does that, what does that tell us, maybe as, as, a, as a group or as the overall condition of our streets? Thanks. Councilor McCabe, do you want to just... Defer? Yeah. <laughs> Chief Engineer? Uh, your Worship, through Councillor Beck. So yeah, 73 uh, is, is good. Um, I'm, I'm quite pleased with that number. Um, uh, do we always want to strive for better, of course. Um, but it's a combination, uh, you know, it's balancing, you know, uh, our budgets, you know, to, uh, you know, make sure we're spending the right amount of money each year. Um, and so it's, it's a bit of a fine balancing act, but uh, it, we're, we're really happy to see a 73. 
Um, and do I think that number should will we'll get a few points better? I think I think you'll start to see that over the next few years. We'll start to creep up to the 75 to 80, and that's that's really a really good spot to be sitting around. So. Uh, but please, where we're at, and 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 I, I will open this invitation to you yourself or any other council. Um, that so we have a a digital map. Uh, we're hoping to get it on the website at some point in the near year in the near future. Um, uh, just just for resources getting that done. Um, we we just haven't been able to do that yet. Uh, but I can definitely show everyone what the map looks like. It's nice color coded map, so it really paints a, a nice visual what the city looks like. Um, uh, in terms of ratings and colors, so uh, if anyone wanted to see that uh, any any time in the in the near future, please uh, reach out to myself, or, or I'll get you in touch with one of my engineering staff to show you as well uh, what that looks like. And you can zoom in. I, I don't want to do a, a screenshot because it'd be hard to see. It's so zoomed out. Yeah. Uh, but if there's specific things you're looking at or want to see in particular, we can we'd be more than happy to share that with you. Yeah, kudos to our uh, to our road builders who do the great job, Chapman Brothers and Allen Construction. So kudos to them. Is that it? Oh, good. CAO Eleanor Muhammad. Thank you, Worship. And I really want to bring up a point of order here, and I'm going to say this in the most respectful way that I certainly can. So Council's role is bylaws, policies, programs, and new services. And I noticed tonight a lot of the discussion has been operational. And I feel like a lot of the, the topics that have been brought up actually could be emailed through myself or to the manager of engineering in order for him to provide this information to you. Um, I, the reason I bring this up is our meetings lately have become very long and I think we could become more efficient if questions are gonna be asked here if they're for the benefit of everyone in the room of council in terms of a new policy, bylaw, program or service that you would like us to provide. So I just want to bring that up tonight um, as a point of order and hopefully in the future, any information requests you have, which is your right, send them to us and we will get that information to you. Point of order accepted, uh, but I just find being a council member for six years, it was all hands on, really hasn't changed much since 2000, 2006. So I feel that, you know, there's a way of dealing with this, finding a balance, but thank you for your point of order. Okay, economic, tourism, cultural development, and I, Councilor McCabe, are you leaving? Do you want to head out? I know you're not feeling well. Are you all right to go? Okay, she's not feeling well. She's not feeling well. Okay. Councilor McKinnon. Thank you, Your Worship. Economic Tourism Development, or Cultural Development met on December 13th. Arts Advisory Board met on December 18th and the minutes are in your package. Uh, we don't have any resolutions this month for your consideration, but I'm gonna offer a few de departmental highlights. <clears throat> First off, congratulations to Lacey Keown on the expansion of 24 Strong. This fast-growing downtown business empowers island youth through acting, dance, and modeling training. The Downtown Parking Ticket Forgiveness Program concluded on December 31st. And a special thank you to Downtown Charlottetown Inc. for leading and joining the city in this initiative. Winter Dine returns on January 22nd, featuring over 20 downtown Charlottetown's finest restaurants. Restaurants will offer a three-course dinner or two-course uh, lunch menus designed by some of Charlottetown's most talented and creative chefs. Both the Charlottetown Christmas Festival and Capital New Year celebrations were a resounding success. Special thanks go out to our partners at Discover Charlottetown and Founders Food Hall and Market for their contributions to these projects. A huge shout out to the organizers of the annual George Trainer Holiday Classic, which took place from December 27th to the 29th. The 19th edition of the tournament, which the city established in memory of the late city councillor George Trainer, attracted 70 teams from across Prince Edward Island. And finally, January is a busy month for sport tourism with annual events, including the Confederation City Classic Basketball Tournament, Charlottetown Ringette Tournament, and Island Gymnastics Academy Prince Edward Classic scheduled to take place. So that's everything. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer. And if not, I manage your Mr. Long is here as well. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Twill. Thank you. 
Thank you, uh, Chair Kevin. Uh, at the meeting, at our last meeting, uh, just, just going over the minutes here, uh, I'm not sure if there's additional information, but the mayor brought up that uh, the province um, is looking at providing funding for shutting uh, Queen Street off, um, I believe from Grafton down to uh, Water Street, <coughs> to Water Street. So I'm not sure if you have any, any information or our manager does, uh, but uh, you know, to shut the uh, this section of Queen Street off for the entire summer is going to require a lot of communications. It's going to require a lot of cooperation, uh, approval, I would suggest, approval, and I'd like to know in terms of what commitments a city would have to endure we have to make, and I, I guess what I'm looking for is a status report. If we can, if the you know discussions are probably ongoing, I'm just looking for um, a, a status report and to see where we proceed from here. Thank you, Councillor Tweel, for your question. Um, I do recall that conversation, but I'm not aware of any conversations. But I'll you know as um, Manager Long says, nothing has started yet, and and any discussions of that uh, that project for the summer. So when it does, we'll make sure that it'll be brought up to the committee and it'll be announced. Yeah, it was floated in that he, the minister would follow up with the department, so that has not happened yet, Wayne? No. Do you want to answer that, Wayne? Your Worship, uh, know that we have not had any communication with the province at this point beyond the brief discussion I believe you had with the minister, so I don't have anything further to add at this time. Okay. Is there a resolution in this package? It's, it just says one resolution. Okay, that's... Okay, environment sustainability. Councillor Terry Bernard. Thank you, Your Worship. Your Worship, uh, our committee met on uh, December 21st. Um, although it says there's no resolution, there is one resolution, Your Worship. Um, so just a couple of highlights before we get to that. Um, the Environment Sustainability Department now has a new sustainability transportation officer, Your Worship. We welcome uh, Anna Kina, who started in this role. So her focus will be on public transit and active transportation. So congratulate her. Uh, your worst of the transit rides in 2023 were up 50% uh, in Charlottetown compared to 2022. 2023 saw over 1.3 million transit rides. Uh, 2022 was 869,000. Um, I say this to let council know that transit ridership has grown exponentially, but uh, to keep up with the ridership demand, we need to adjust our ICIP application. So your worst of that's the one resolution. Um, it's still the same amount of buses, but uh, in order to keep up with the ridership, with the demand, uh, we have to order a few more diesel buses and, and pull back some on the electric buses with the, with the same amount of money that's been approved. That's why that's happening. Uh, don't like to do that, um, but there's going to be a shortage in 2025. Um, and I, I think everybody's seen the presentation. I think you've seen the graph where, where the ridership has been strongly going north and there's a number of buses that have to be retired between this year and next year with uh, we, we we had some in order coming in for 2024 we have none for 2025 the electric buses were to come in for 2026 so there's going to be a gap that we're trying to fix right now your worship so that leads to the, uh, the resolutions in your packets any other questions i'll do my best to answer them <coughs> councillor Twill. On the report. Uh, thank you for your report. Councilor Bernard, I, I've been following um, you no know, challenges that electric buses have across the province and across the country. And um, what I'm learning is that there's many challenges with electrical buses. And that uh, you know the provinces through uh, school buses are experiencing some challenges, delays, deficiencies, and um, I understand this is not a a new challenge. These challenges are existing, you know, everywhere. And that's uh, introduced and implemented uh, 
electric buses or vehicles, whatever the case may be, as um, uh, your committee looked at some of the challenges that the provincial government has faced with uh, electric school buses, some of them still have yet to uh, see the pavement. And I wonder, uh, you know, if, if we were to be in a dilemma where electric buses are at a service and need required maintenance, uh, where, where does that leave us when uh, we're provide, trying to provide that service to our community? And is that something that your committee has had any discussions on? Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Tweel. No, I don't believe our, our committee's had any discussion on it. We have heard about the issues, and I guess uh, from the feedback that, that I'm hearing is, yes, there has been some issues. Um, are they serious? They're not serious. It's, it's getting the parts is what the issue is. I don't, think the, uh, I don't think the breakdowns are serious breakdowns. I think it's just getting the parts they need. Um, is it going to change us moving forward? I think it's just a transition period. You're moving from the, the diesel buses over to electrification. And any time there's a, there's a transition, there's going to be some hiccups. Um, are they enough to have us look at possibly reversing that plan? No. Um, and I think that, was, that particular story that was in the paper was, was one particular company. Um, so uh, even the feedback I'm getting from the province is that the buses are working great. They're going to be ordering more. Has there been some backlog in parts? Yes, there has. Um, the last few years, there have been a backlog of a lot of things. So um, I'm not hearing anything real serious that would make us look to reverse our plan. Uh, CAO, Eleanor, do you want to put the resolution on the floor? Thank you, Your Worship. Environment and Sustainability Resolution Number 1, moved by Councillor Bernard, seconded by Councillor McKinnon. Be it resolved that the City of Charlottetown endorse a request to ISIP to adjust the funding agreement for from three diesel and seven electric buses to six diesel and four electric buses, and that the mayor and CAO are hereby authorized to execute standard contracts and agreements to implement this resolution. Questions called. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, 9-0 with uh, Councilor McCabe absent. That's it? Thank you, Thank you, sir. Next report is strategic priorities, communications, intergovernmental cooperation. Councilor Norman Beck, Ward 3. Thank you for that, Your Worship. Uh, so this <clears throat> strategic priorities, uh, inter cooperation, communication, did not meet since the last meeting. Uh, we do have a first reading that is uh, in your package today. And uh, I, I would like to speak to it. It, it is uh, some proposed amendments to our procedural bylaw uh, that we are proposing for consideration here tonight. And um, I, I guess really in a by and large, it, it's, it's a, uh, uh, it's in a, hope to or a recommendation to maybe improve what we think are some improvements that could be made to our practices to uh, in, 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 with regards to conducting our business here in council. So the ones that I do <coughs> that were of note, um, the first one would be uh, the uh, uh, making our, uh, we've basically been running on uh, second Monday of the month has been Regular council meeting, fourth Monday of the month has been what's called a special council meeting, which has not been very special because it's been regularly occurring. Uh, and uh, so therefore it's not, it doesn't really fall under that uh, bracket of a special meeting when it's on, on a regular basis. So that was one uh, item that we are looking to change, is to change that from a special council meeting and call it a regular council meeting. In conjunction with that, we're also proposing a night change of the uh, of uh, when we hold our council meetings from Monday to Tuesday. Kind of goes back to what the CAO was just mentioning here a minute ago. When we're looking at, um, oftentimes we get the packages on Friday. We spend the weekend reading them. Oftentimes we're getting five, six hundred pages of material to absorb. This package was a little smaller than most. 
Um, but we don't really have that opportunity to answer any questions or to get any uh, questions answered prior to coming into council. So having that little bit extra time, we we'll moving get from a Monday to a Tuesday, would enable us to get some of those answers that maybe we do not currently have the time to get. The other area would be around notice of motions, and uh, we've had a lot of notice of motions uh, that have come up here in, uh, uh, of, of late. And uh, basically what this does is it just outlines the process for articulating notice of motions, how they work, um, and giving us a procedure to do that. Another point that we're looking to add, add as well too is the idea of the education sessions. And currently as it stands, <clears throat> we cannot do an education session under our current procedural bylaws. So we're looking to implement the opportunity to have an educational session. Just something like uh, recently we went through uh, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion training. That would be something that could fall under an education session. Uh, anything with regards to the MGA or uh, if we have wanted to have a session where it's for information purposes only, this would sort of outline what we would do in those education sessions, how they would be used, and uh, for, what, for what means. Um, and then the final thing that we're looking to add as well is, is the uh, p possibility of having Committee of the Whole, which would stand as a, uh, a regular standing committee and would have its own terms of ref reference, which is why it's included in uh, at the end there as effectively an additional committee in addition to Parks and Rec, Police and, em and Emergency Services. And again, the criteria as to what we would, what we would be using Committee of the Whole for is all outlined in there as well too. So it's basically some of including, trying to include some more tools in our arsenal that we do not have currently under with our um, packet of tools that are available to us for governance. So a lot of it is sort of implementing some, um, adding some areas to our procedural bylaw and also some slight changes as well too. So anyway, I'll uh, entertain any questions or any comments or discussion that will go on what's here in front of us tonight. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Peck, <coughs> Councillor Council Bernard. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I'm against it. I'll make that clear. Um, notice of motions. We, we, we've been doing notice of motions. So there's not an issue with notice of motions. Educational sessions. We've had educational sessions before. We have them in the Parkdale room. To put on another regular public meeting, it's always been the second Monday of the month. Council agreed here a while ago to have a, a second one for emergencies, things that couldn't, <coughs> couldn't wait for that second meeting of the second Monday of the month, being if there was some uh, tenders that had come through and uh, sometimes there's only a two-week window on that tender, can't wait, so you would have that special meeting. There's been no reason that special meeting hasn't been working. I know when you, when you book a regular public meeting, you have to have it, and a lot of times, uh, there's no need. Um, you just had a meeting on January the 3rd. There was nothing on that agenda that couldn't have waited till tonight. There was nothing pressing. It's just we've get into the habit of staff prepares things for that second Monday of the month when there hasn't been a need. That, that initially was made for, as I said earlier, uh, presentations or resolutions that couldn't wait till, till the regular second Monday of the month. Uh, so in essence, that fourth Monday of the month, it's been abused. We haven't needed to use it as much as we have. Uh, so I, I, I'm not sure if I see the need to book a regular monthly meeting. If something comes up, the mayor has the authority to call a special meeting. If there's nothing needed on that fourth Monday, then that meeting's canceled. Um, <coughs> so other than that, I, I, the notice of most and the educational sessions, we, we've had them before and, we'll, and there hasn't been an issue. So I'm not sure why we want to add another meeting on top of the meetings that we have. I think we just need to be a little better organized. So that's my two cents. <sighs> Councilor Ramsey. Thank you, Worship. Thank you, uh, Councilor Beck. And I'm in, I, I'm in agreement with Councilor Bernard also too. <clears throat> Sometimes we meet for, just for the sake of meetings. Uh, and to get back to your point, Councilor Beck, about 
moving it from a Monday or Tuesday really makes no difference either way. But in the past, if somebody was not going to read their package when they received it from Friday till Monday, well, they're certainly not going to read it that, that, I mean, that last day. Like, I'm not saying everybody does or, or, or they don't, but that extra day, in my personal opinion, <clears throat> is not going to sit, is not going to have me sit down and say, uh oh, I have a meeting Tuesday. I have to read my package on Monday. But when you had all weekend to read it. So, right there, I, I'm not in agreement with that either. So, <clears throat> but as far as having the extra, uh, extra council meeting, I'm not in favor of it either because. For the last five years, like we've been at an awful lot of meetings here. And uh, you can just check w with our clerk over there, like she has them all recorded. And like one year, I think we had a, a, we're up to about 148 meetings. Like that's a lot of meetings where sometimes if we have to pass something, we can probably get here at noon and it'll probably take us 10 minutes, which happened in the past on certain items, Your Worship. I think, you know, the, there's a special meeting called, and everybody showed up, and away you went, and you're back to work. So that, that's just my two cents also. Thank you. Councilor Toyo. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, I want, I want to uh, extend my appreciation for uh, the committee looking at uh, Different, uh, different vehicles, different avenues to, uh, you know, have the council meet. Um, I think um, meeting the second Monday of the month has proved to be, uh, you know, some cases. Uh, most cases, I believe it's it's been effective. We've dealt with some issues that need to be dealt with. Um, <coughs> the option that Councillor Ramsey pointed out meeting at uh, noon hour if there's uh, a need to call council in for a particular agenda item that uh, uh, needs to be resolved and approved by council. Uh, we've done that in the past. Um, you know, I, I think we gotta be careful here in terms of, you know, uh, having meetings, required meetings where council is called in. Uh, we do have our committee structure I think the committee structure works uh, works well. I mean, you're not always pleased with the results of uh, what comes out of the rec committees or a recommending body, the recommend the council. But I, I think we got to be co cognizant of um, the overuse of uh, council meetings for the sake of having meetings. Uh, I think our system uh, is is it is it uh, the best system in the world? No, I wouldn't suggest it's the best system in the world, but I think it's a pretty good system. And I think it works out well. So if it's required to have, uh, to, for council to be called in, and whether it's done at a noon hour or some evening, um, I'd like to keep it, uh, you know, on a Monday or a Tuesday, because, you know, you have other, you other commitments throughout the week. You have committee meetings, meetings with your constituents, uh, community meeting with your constituents, and you have to plan that out. And you can't plan that out if you're running to run an additional council meeting. So, with all due respect, um, I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I just don't see the need right now. I, I appreciate you taking the time to examine it, but I, I just don't see the need right now. I, re I really don't. And uh, you know, Council Ramsey talked about all the meetings. I remember last term. I never saw so many meetings. Oh, yeah. It was just, it was, it was incredible. And so we've got other commitments in the community. And, and if we're going to be here, then we can't be up with our, with our, with our constituents. Okay. Thank and you. to me, to me, that is just as important as being here. Yeah. Okay. Thank That's you. That's just as important as being here uh, to be able to bring their concerns and their recommendations to the respective uh, standing committee level. Or to council. Yep. So, again, I thank, thank, thank you, you for your examination, but uh, I'm, I'm not in favor of another, uh, another, another meeting. Thank you, Council Patrick. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I'd just like to say thank you to the chair and the committee for the work they did and the recommendations they brought forward. 
I guess being new to, to council, I, I mean, I don't really know what I don't know here and what, you know, over the last year in the sense of, I think what's been working is, um, or what's been helpful for me is to uh, have some better opportunities to uh, get more information in a timely manner, to collaborate more with fellow council members. So I do support a lot of the initiatives within the proposal. Uh, do we need a second Monday meeting, standing meeting? Seems to be a little debate around that, so maybe that's something we can go back and have a look on that particular one, but I do support the other areas. I mean, getting your council package on a Friday doesn't give much time to ask questions by Monday. Uh, gives an extra day. It's Monday, Tuesday. What's the difference? I, you know, I've only been here a year, so it's not changing much for me in that way. But as Monday, as a Tuesday night, uh, notice of motions that are brought forward. Um, you know, firm on anything that we can do to standardize or put a procedure or uh, some structure around something. I'm all right with that because again, if I don't know how to, that process works, it'd be an opportunity for me to learn that. So I, I do support the majority of the uh, things in in your proposal coming forward. Um, <laughs> And then we'll go from there. Thank you. Council Bernard, it's second time. Um, Monday night or Tuesday night really doesn't matter to me either. I'm okay with either night. So. Council Beck. Well, is there anyone else who wants to say anything first? I'd, I'd rather hear from others yeah. first. Um, I got Deputy Mary Yank up and Council Ramsey second time. Yes, um, thank you. Um, thank you, Councillor Buck, for your report. As one of the committee members, I was, you know, fortunate to be um, around for a lot of the discussion around around this. So, to me, um, I would be, I would happy, I would happily give this a whirl to see how it works. I have, I, I, you know, um, CAO Mahama just pointed out tonight that a lot of the questions that we did ask this evening weren't really questions we should have been asking tonight. And maybe if we had that extra day on Monday and Tuesday, we'd have more time when we got our package to be able to get those answered so that we didn't have to be asking the operational questions at, at, a, at our monthly meeting of council. And so, so therefore, Tuesday would be fine with me. And as long as we gave the public lots of notice that we're going to be changing the meetings, I love the idea of the educational and professional development um, times that we've really not been having a lot of, and um, so I would be I would be fine to give this all a whirl and and um, you know and the great thing is is that if we try it and it doesn't work, guess what? We don't have to do it anymore. We can come back here and not do it again. Yeah, that's just my two cents worth. Thank you, Councillor Ramsey and Councillor McLaren. Yes, and I thank you for that too, Councillor Beck, for all the work you did for this. And and as I said, Monday or Tuesday makes no difference to me because I'm retired. But uh, <laughs> I mean, one night's the same as the other, really. And to get back to uh, the ed the educational thing, like my personal view is, uh, if we're going to have one or two or three of them a year or four of them a year, and I know you can't make it mandatory, but it but it certainly would be great to have everybody here to put you, you you know because last time I think there's maybe six of us here or seven of us here and we're all not that smart that we know everything so I, I I'm just basically saying if if there's going to be an educational tool which is fantastic because we all, all we all can learn but at the same time you know we all should be here for it if we have one thank you catch me getting Thank you, Worship. Uh, I'm just going to give my two cents worth as well. And uh, thank you to <laughs> Councillor Beck. He did do a lot of work uh, in getting this um, committee as a whole structure figured out. I do support it as well. As uh, Deputy Mayor said, let's try it. See, let's give it a whirl. I think we're, uh, and Councillor uh, Twill said, like, we have all these extra committee meetings. We won't have all these extra committee meetings if we have meet as a committee of whole. We won't be meeting, I don't think, as much as we would be um, with three council meetings or three committee meetings, special meeting, regular council meeting. But I think we should give it a try. And uh, if it doesn't, if it fails, we'll come back and as we were. Thank you. Council McLear. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor Brown. Um, uh, I guess much like uh, Councillor uh, Matard expressed, um, you know, kind of being new, 
not having uh, not having a lot to compare it to. But in, you know, in general, um, I, I certainly like the Tuesday idea. Um, I hear what Councillor Ramsey says: if you you know you get it on Friday, if you haven't read it by then, you may not going to read it. But uh, there, at times, there is a lot of material. Having an extra day, and if that allows. Uh, if that allows allows you to give you more time or to reach out to staff or to get clarification, so I'm I, and I'd be in full support of that. And as for uh, you know the more education piece uh, and anything that can, um, I'm not interested in more meetings. I think there's all kinds of meetings, but if there's any, uh, if this can bring some efficiency to anything, and uh, you know the education piece, uh, Council Brard expressed, you know that's happened in the past, but. Um, I think if there's a conscious effort on the education piece, it's one to say it's one thing to think it's one thing to say it can happen or it's happened in the past. But if there's uh, maybe a conscious decision to have an agenda of what those education pieces could be, you know, could be around, I think would be uh, you know would be helpful. So in general, um, I certainly support it or the spirit of the work that uh, you and your committee have done, Councillor Beck, and and if there's. Uh, uh, I don't know if the decision's got to be made here tonight, but if we can kind of go away and still give this some further thought, then maybe there can be some refinements uh, that uh, we can, uh, you know, that can come out of the time and effort that you've put into this. So, thank you. Thank you, Councilor McLaren. Is that something we're going to consider? What are you suggesting? Do you want to speak? Yeah, thank you, Worship. If I could just offer um, some points of clarification. So, Committee of the Whole is not addressed in this procedural bylaw amendment. Uh, and the reason why is because procedural bylaw enables committees to be able to be formed, um, but it doesn't name the individual committees. So, where you have Committee of the Whole named is in the um, terms of reference with the rest of the committees. So, just for clarity on that, so you wouldn't be voting on that in the procedural bylaw. Uh, the other piece that I just want to address is there's no intention here of extra meetings. It's rebranding what you call a special meeting to a regular meeting because this meeting has consistently been held every month since I started here. It's not, a, it's not special. Um, under the Municipal Government Act, a special meeting is a meeting that you're calling because you need to address something and there's certain protocols that go into place for that to call that special meeting. This meeting is in the regular calendar on the website Every month, it's just called a special meeting. Um, so really, it's a regular meeting. Um, and I would put forth here tonight that this city has so much business to conduct. There's just absolutely no way that I can see it being conducted in only one regular council meeting a month. We definitely need those two. And I would like to streamline all these other meetings because we um, elected officials have expressed that they have challenges when they're called last minute at noon or other times of the day. So the more business that we can um, streamline into th these two regular council meetings a month um, might make it easier for those who have expressed concern with on the fly um, meetings. And then the other point that I will just leave you with is the education sessions have been added in here because this format that we have here tonight is what your education session would need to be in and it's not very conducive to a learning environment. And that's why education sessions have been put into the procedural bylaw is, is. And the one other point I will add, notice of motion only brings structure to what you're already required to do under the procedural bylaw in terms of new resolutions having to go through committee first. It just gives you a structure to be able to do that, and it's outlining what that is. So I just wanted to clarify that for you. Thank you. Councillor Beck. You go ahead. No, I'd rather, I'd rather finish. I <laughs> you go. OK, Councillor Twill. I just want to have a little bit of a standoff. That's fine. I'll go. So, so, uh, so as I understand it, it's just approving the special meeting we have the fourth 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 Monday. Monday of the month. That's all we're doing is just entrenching that as a procedure, right? It's part of our procedure. We're not adding a third meeting. No. Okay. It's become uh, a regular. That, that's fine. Okay. So that's. It's just uh, changing it from special to regular. regular. It's changing Okay, okay, that's fine. But we're not adding a third meeting. Oh, okay. Uh, and sure, go ahead. The noon hour meetings. The noon hour meetings, to my mind, are beneficial, right? 
I think there, uh, there's something there. Like I said, uh, we, we've had lots of noon hour meetings in the past. They've worked out quite well. And, uh, I, you know, I mean, I think maybe even council, you know, someday could start having meetings uh, during the day, if that's ever possible. Uh, I know some, some folks have to work, but I mean, if there's, if there's an opportunity to have council meetings conducted during the day, uh, that's an advantage for everyone. It's an advantage for staff, and it's an advantage for council. But it's just, it's just a suggestion. Yeah. Councilor Beck, just a suggestion. Okay. But uh, anyway, it's just to standardize the, 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 the fourth meeting. Fourth Monday. It becomes a regular meeting. Pardon me? It's a reg second regular monthly meeting. Rebranding. Re rebranding, yeah. Yeah, yeah. rebranding. Yeah, yeah. And we can have it at noon hours it's free because it would be a free meal. Pardon me? We can have it at noon and have a free meal. Yeah, you, you seem to have a lot of those. <laughs> Councilor Bernard. So, um, Councilor Beck and I used to play hockey against each other. I was a goalie, he was a player, so I always had to wait for him to make the first move. So, <laughs> anyway, that was the old Metro League days. Um, so, it's on the calendar because Council agreed quite a while ago to have that second month, or the fourth month, fourth Monday of the month, in case we needed it. So that's why it's on the calendar. Um, I'm under the understanding that when you change it to a regular public meeting, they're advertised and you've got to have them. Whether there's something on the agenda or not, you've got to have them. Where it's a special meeting, you can cancel. Well, you know what? You, we're, 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 we're changing the, uh, we're changing the procedure bylaw to be able to make it a regular public meeting as opposed to a special meeting, so I'm not sure why. But to me, that says that it's, it's a regular scheduled public meeting that you have to have something on the agenda for. So, you know, to me, is there a need of it? No. And if there is, we can call one. I just think that now, once you, once you change it over and you change the procedure bylaw, you have to have one. So, you have to find something to put on the agenda. So, like I said, you had one January 3rd. You look at that agenda, and we could have had it tonight. Yeah. There's nothing on that agenda that needed to be <coughs> last Monday night, but so, yeah. well, um, we, we covered a lot. But I mean, as far as like, with the education and, 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 and uh, um, yeah, the notice motion, I'm not worried about, but the education sessions, um, Eleanor, correct me if I'm wrong, we, we can have an educational session at any time. We don't need to have a regular public meeting for an educational session. Go ahead. Thank you, Thank you Your Worship. Um, so yes, you do. There, a, well, we've had them the before. Well, I know you've done many things before at this municipality, but <laughs> under under the Municipal Government Act, council comes together in a regular meeting or a special meeting. That's it. So there's not opportunity for um, for education sessions or that. So, like as as a council, you have options of a public meeting or a closed meeting if it meets Section 119 of the Municipal Government Act. So for an education session, therefore, it would need to be a public meeting in this format. But we're not, deal in this we're room. not dealing with policy. We're not dealing with decisions has to be made at an educational session. We're getting educated. We're not, we're not passing any resolutions. Yes, but under the Municipal Government Act, council only comes together in, in two ways. Either to make regular meeting, to make decisions. special meeting, or committees as to established, make, right? To make but none of, those, none of those formats fit one-way learning as an education session. And that's why in the procedural bylaw, um, you can build in the ability to have education sessions. So we did run this through legal uh, to make sure, and we had those conversations. Um, not in particular David Hooley, an, another uh, lawyer with Cox and Palmer. Um, but this is really to enable this to go forward for you, to have these sessions. But my understanding in the MGA is when you come together, those are making decisions or making recommendations for decisions. If you want to go and have an educational session, you don't need to have a regular scheduled meeting. And that's why we've had some here in, in the Park Deal Room as educational sessions. We're not making decisions. We're not making recommendations. We're learning. So by putting it into your procedural bylaw, into law, it allows you to do that, to be able to have that. So you didn't have that before. So you weren't within um, yeah, I, I, I disagree with you there, but anyway, that's fine. Okay.
Okay. Yeah, just one second. Councillor Macklin and Councillor Ramsey. Just to clarify, uh, CAO Elner, I understand what you said, that the NGA doesn't allow for education sessions to happen within council, is that correct? Uh, thank you. Through your worship to Councillor McAleer, the MGA isn't specific uh, in terms of education sessions. It's silent on it. When legislation is silent, it usually means can't do. You need legislation that says can do, right? So the legislation says that you can have councillor meetings, council meetings. Um, it says that you can um, uh, have special uh, council meetings. It says you can also set up committee meetings. So what this, under this bylaw, what it does is it allows you to have a form of a council meeting but per, puts parameters around it of what it would look like um, in a public way and through bylaw. So, and again, just like you said, so by having it in the procedural bylaw, it's a way to formalize and have it recognized that, it, that it, these education sessions could happen. And, right. Thank you, Councillor McLear. So to be clear, what the, what the difference is here is we're delineating that in a member education session, so council education sessions, no council business is being conducted and no decisions are being made. Therefore, it's not a meeting that would be public because there's no council conduct, like business being conducted in this forum. So that's what this is outlining for you, just enabling this to be able to happen. Yeah. So the education meeting is a closed meeting, correct? Yeah, the educational thing is, I think was throwing everybody off because when we were here last month or something and we, like on a Saturday morning, or I think it was Saturday morning, wherever it was, and, and so was that supposed to be posted? Is that what you're saying? That, that Because we had them in the past and, and that's what, which is sort of muddying the waters here, is that, so if somebody brings, if somebody's gonna make a presentation as an educational thing, that's um, clear as, as anything. You, you can come to it, it's not. Oh, uh, thank Go you, uh, through your worship to Councillor Ramsey. So no, this isn't a presentation format. This is, well, it could be if you're actively learning, but this isn't like a member from the community making a presentation to council. This is elected officials coming together in a learning environment, not conducting council business. So that's, that's the distinction here. This isn't a council meeting, so it's not posted publicly. It's not open to the public. It's simply you receiving one-way information and learning and training in something, whether it's governance or equity, diversity, inclusion, whatever topic um, that you would have it in. Um, where the accountability and transparency takes place is um, in, the next regular council meeting after the education session, there'll be um, a report provided from the education session just with a summary of what it was. Um, and um, that's, that's pretty much it. So that accountability piece is there. Um, that learning had taken place and then the public would be aware of that. So why were we, were we able to do that then, last month? <sighs> you mean the In budget? The last, oh, the, the, the budget. last equity diversity yes, inclusion exactly. training? No, the same way that we, we have done up, up until this point without any sort of framework in the background. So this is just trying to, um, again, coming so up with like standard the whole operating thing, yes. procedures for okay. this council. Great. Thank you. It's lovely. Mm -hmm. So, Councillor Beck, do you want to go with the first reading or do you want to listen to some of this, these comments, take them back to the standing committee? What's, what's your... I know that the motion's on the floor, but anyways, just what do you think? Well, I I, I think we've kind of I think this, I think this has been good. Yeah. I think we flushed out yeah. exactly kind of what we're meaning, and you know we've given some clarification. We're not looking to add. We're we're rebranding a little bit. We're 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 being more accountable and transparent by saying that if we go and have a meeting. We're working within our procedural bylaw. We're not painting any lines. We're not coloring the lines at all. We're working within our framework. And it may, we may have, who knows how many sessions we have, but I, I, I agree wholeheartedly with the deputy. If we go down this road and we find out this is a burdensome, this is a malleable document. We can change it at any time. We can come back and say, that's not work. Good intentions didn't work out well. Let's go back and revisit it. So we can do that at any time. I think, 
I think it's just, uh, I think we have to allow it to, uh, I think what we're doing is we're, in, we're, we're enhancing our skill set when it comes to our governance, really, I think is what it is at the end of the day. And if it works and it makes us better, I don't know why we wouldn't do it. If it doesn't work and it's, it's, it's setting us back or it's not advancing us, then let's go back and look at it at a later time. We can make changes again. Um, but I, I think I think the discussion was great because uh, I think it's 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 understanding about how we what does it actually mean what are we actually it's one thing to have a report come forth and I'm glad the discussion was had and I'm glad we got the clarification that we did um, but uh, I, I personally I think we're I don't know what else might be left to change or what might be or if there's a desire to yeah, vote could, on it, or yeah, if, if you table want. it. I'm just yeah. What I'm asking is that maybe there are some things, some issues that were brought up here that could be brought back to say we listened and you know we're going to put them in. Hmm. Yeah. So do I. So it, yeah, it doesn't have to be. We don't have to do it tonight. I mean, if there if there are some things, then we can make it even better. That's it. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so, so if there are, I guess if there are some refinements or some tweaks to what we have currently here, yeah. uh, forward them to me and we can, we can look at them and take it back to our next committee. I think we're meeting on the 17th or something like that. So we could bring it up at that time, Eleanor? Yeah. 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 Sure. I'm just, sure. I'm just trying to get a buy-in from, yeah. you know, super yeah. majority of council. No, we don't have to. We don't have to walk out here with a decision tonight. If if there's uh, if there's some stuff that people want to take, because we did have a good discussion, good healthy discussion, and if there's some stuff that you want to kind of think about and go back, sounds good to me. Okay, what's the procedure for tabling, David? Do we know that, or CAO, to table <laughs> a discussion? Do we just have to pass a resolution to table it? Can I just ask one clarification? Sure, go ahead. Um, to Councillor Bernard's point, any meeting can be cancelled if we don't, whether it's a regular meeting, just, to, just so I'm clear on that, any meeting can be cancelled, <coughs> regular meeting or special meeting or anything, as long as there's prior notice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks. That, that is true, any meeting can be cancelled and our regular, our, our, our second Monday of the month can be too. Like, well, I mean, <coughs> we'll be here till 9.30. But you know what? Well, it's the discussion that... The, I know, but that's the... the, so you're breaking the rules? I know, but the discussion started here, and I think Councillor Beck already stated this was a healthy discussion. I knew this was going to take time. Well, that's that's why I was leaving... Put a limit on it. I know, but here. again... So we have rules some days and some not. No, we don't. We don't, we don't have rules some we days. Rules. We, we do follow the rules. Like well, you do at the committee level, like everybody. I just think special meetings are advertised... The 24 hours beforehand, well, when it becomes a regular public meeting, it's advertised to the public as those dates. And so when the public expects that, and then we turn around and cancel, it's a lot harder to do that. That's my only issue with calling it a regular so, public meeting. So I'm just trying to get it tabled. Yeah. We're just getting it table now. Okay. So is... That's right. And they're going to forward anything to us. Correct. Thank you. Thank you for your report, Councillor Beck. Okay, finance, audited, tender, and administration. Councillor McAleer. Lost my voice. Thank you, Mayor Brown. Um, be quick, finance, audit, and tender committee uh, uh, didn't meet um, uh, since the last meeting. There's no resolutions. Uh, ho however, just quickly want to say, um, the uh, certainly uh, pleased um, and excited that uh, the uh, our new director for finance and corporate services, uh, Danny Jenkins, uh, is coming to us to be here. I believe in the fifteenth of the month. Uh, it's going to be very timely. Um, he's coming at a time where we're going to be going into a busy time, getting ready for budgets. Um, the other thing that I, uh, you know, he's going to come with a great skill set uh, from the municipal level and very uh, knowledgeable on the MGA, as I understand it. So, uh, again, it will be a, a tremendous resource in getting us ready, too, for, uh, 
for uh, sitting down with the province and looking at our funding formula. So uh, just uh, like to pass that on. That's my comments. Thank you. If there's any questions, I'll do my best to answer them or get your answers. Thank you. Councillor Tweedle. Thank you, Councillor McAleer. As you know, for the past several months, I've been uh, lobbying and requesting the uh, formation of uh, procurement bylaw. I've um, been assured that the bylaw would be forthcoming, and uh, I thought we would have dealt with it by now. So what I'm asking is, uh, besides doing a jurisdictional scan for a procurement bylaw across Canada, uh, can you give me a time frame when this council will be entertaining a proposed procurement bylaw and will it have all the uh, supporting documentation in place, all the background information as to, from a comparative analysis as to what um, other municipalities across this country um, includes in their procurement bylaw? I, I think that was one of the recommendations that come out of the BDO uh, report, although uh, we did have a policy in place years prior. I was disappointed and shocked that the policy wasn't followed in all, in all occasions, even when, when tenders were submitted and passed by council. But nonetheless, uh, uh, Councillor McAleer, can you please give me a time frame when this council is going to have that discussion on the procurement bylaw? When can we expect it? Councillor McAleer. Thank you, Councillor Tweedy. It must be mind reader. Um, I um, uh, I have that uh, certainly on my agenda. Looking forward to uh, when uh, Danny Jenkins, our uh, manager of finance and corporate services, and I know uh, I didn't uh, um, get um, uh, to uh, discuss uh, with Betty uh, Betty French, our, our current manager, uh, here this uh, recently or since uh, since the new year. But uh, that is something that uh, I do have top of mind. Uh, and I do think that uh, I'd like to think by um, by uh, you know the first quarter, the end of the first quarter, of, uh, you know, of the year that uh, we're um, going to have some uh, something uh, that uh, we can look at uh, on that and have something ready for it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Human Resources, Councillor Justin Mater. Emily's here. Hello, Emily. Um, Your Worship, do you want to go into a um, extension or? Formula? Yes, we have to vote on extension. Uh, we're at eight o'clock. Moved by Councillor Beck, second by Councillor Ramsey. All in favor? All against? Okay, Councillor Tart. Your Worship, thank you, Worship. Uh, the Human Resource Committee uh, did not meet since the last regular scheduled meeting, so, so therefore there are no. Um, resolutions for your consideration this evening. <coughs> However, as the chair of the HR committee, I am pleased to announce that our chief administration, administrative officer, Eleanor Muhammad, completed her six month probationary period in September. As part of the hiring process, an independent firm was conducted a formative performance evaluation consisting of interviews with 16 stakeholders from city staff, the external business community, her peers across the province, and the mayor and council. We recognize that the first six months for any new CAO in an organization is a period of transition, learning, building relationships, and implementing, sorry, implementing change where applicable. The performance review is not meant to be a pass-fail process, but rather a tool to gather feedback on how the CAO performs and identify her strengths and areas where she may improve. This process has undoubtedly given the CAO a path forward to successfully fulfilling her roles and responsibilities as the CAO. It continues to allow her to grow in this position to better serve the staff, the community, mayor and council. At this time, I would like to congratulate and recognize Eleanor for her accomplishments to date. Eleanor is doing a fantastic job as the city of Charlottetown's CAO. We look forward to her continued work and efforts to ensure the successful outcomes 
laid out before her. Thank you. Well done, CAO. Thank you. Councilor Tart. No questions? Okay. Protective and Emergency Services. Councillor Kevin Ramsey. <coughs> Mike's on. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, the Protective Emergency Services Committee did not meet last month. There are no resolutions, and if you have any questions, I have my two chiefs here. And I'd just like to mention today, this afternoon, Your Worship, we got some new gear over at the Charlottetown Fire Station number one. And uh, we had a chance to review it and even sort of look like firemen, the two of us. We put on uniforms and things along that line. It was probably the two, uh, the two smallest guys there. But anyway, we look good. And uh, this is all new gear that's been ordered and it's finally come in. It's battery operated, so we don't have to be lugging uh, generators and hydraulic lines and everything for it. So I think it's really going to help us. And I think we're the first one, Chief Mamie, in Canada that have all this up to date? Did I hear that today? Thank you. Uh, Your Worship, uh, through Chair. Um, yes, what the uh, supplier provided today was that we were the uh, the best equipped with the newest equipment in Atlanta, Canada, which is he serves. So as a department across the board, we are. With thanks to Mayor and Council, of course, through the years. Okay. Questions? Councillor McAleer. Yeah, uh, just um, to uh, uh, Chair Ramsey, uh, maybe through the uh, the uh, department, I'm not sure. Um, just any update on the um, the union thing? You know, the uh, new fire, new uh, potentially new fire station. Are there any um, is there anything additional you can share with us in terms of what might be imminent uh, on both those things, the contract and potentially. Uh, what might be going on with uh, a new fire station? Thank you. Well, it's all operational there, Councillor. What's your name? I'm uh, And uh, especially with the union, uh, it's operational and it's HR. And I, as we as council, cannot speak. And I don't think you can speak in that public, can you, Chief, as of right now? And uh, in the fire station, I think you're still in your process, but you can go ahead, Chief. Thank you, Chair, uh, and your worship uh, through Chair uh, to Councillor McAleer. Um, yes, the collective agreement, as we as you mentioned there, we're still awaiting a decision of uh, the arbitration board. So that's uh, pending here in, in the month of January, hopefully. And as far as the new station, we're, we're still conducting uh, and working with the uh, OPTA, the fire underwriters. Uh, we just uh, re-engaged again after the holidays to see where we're at, and we're hopeful for a spring timeline for our, our underwriters review, and from there, um, any sort of uh, recommendations for stations and locations will come out of that report. I think you're next, Councillor Twill. Thank you, uh, Councillor Ramsey, uh, yourself to the Chief of Police. Uh, one of the recurring themes that I've been hearing from the community, uh, and I'm not sure where this, uh, this mindset is, is coming from, but, you know, with the uh, outreach center, drug usage, distribution of drug paraphernalia, <coughs> some of the activities that are illegal activities that are taking place in this community, uh, which has skyrocketed since the opening of the outreach center. Nobody here can dispute that. Is that uh, you know I keep hearing this this reoccurring theme that this is the new normal, and I'm I'm not quite sure who is promoting the new normal, but I can tell you, uh, as 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 a counselor for this ward, um, this new normal, wherever that's coming from, or if this is an accepted practice and. You know, we've got to tolerate this, and this is what we're going to have to endure. And, uh, you know, that's just the way it is. I'm not sure where this is coming from, but I can tell you that uh, lifelong residents have lived in this community, contributed to this community, um, helping revitalize this community, and doing some great things uh, 
prior to the opening of the outreach center. Um, I just want you to know, Chief, that, uh, that the community's not one bit interested in this so-called new normal. None whatsoever. So I don't know where this is coming, where it's coming from, uh, whether it's coming from our, our police department or coming from uh, people in the community, whether it be uh, people that are, that are involved with NGOs or provincial government. I, I have no idea. But I just wanted to make, uh, make it clear, crystal clear, the community's not one bit interested in this so-called new normal. We're not interested in that. We want our communities and neighborhoods to be fully protected, uh, zero tolerance for Ill illegal activities, and what we're continuing to see on Houston Street is, is something we want totally eliminated. Um, and that's why there's such a strong resistance uh, from a lot of people that live in this community, whether you live around the Outreach Center, down around Park Street or Beach Street. Uh, they're just not interested in that kind of a lifestyle. Okay. Thank you. Not, not interested at all. So, um, again, I don't know who's promoting it or where well, this is something that's going to be entrenched in the, in the mindset of, you know, what we do here at City Hall or uh, what's being promoted out there in the community. But I'll reiterate it one more time. We are not one bit interested in this so-called new normal. Not one iota, and uh, we want we want it uh, we want it to go back to the way it was before the outreach center was ever open. We were on the right path. We were doing some wonderful things. We want to get back to that. And uh, from the community perspective, uh, the com the community uh, is not interested in even relocating the outreach center. They want to completely totally shut down. Thank you. Okay. Parks, recreation, and <coughs> leisure activities. Councilor Twayo. Thank you, Chief. Chief, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you uh, Mr. Uh, uh, the, your Parks and Recreation Leisure Committee met today. Uh, pretty good discussion today. We discussed a number of items and looked at our capital projects. Uh, a couple of items I'd like to bring up. Uh, one was the uh, the roadway in Victoria Park, opening that up to uh, transportation uh, pathway, active transportation pathway. I think Councillor Beck, you asked that last month. Good question. I'm in full agreement with you, and I think most people are in this chamber. Uh, the manager had indicated that uh, nothing can be done this year from uh, an interim <laughs> perspective. There's uh, obviously a long-term plan. Uh, that, that both Parks and Recreation and uh, Public Works are going to have to get together to work on uh, to address the infrastructure requirements. I did ask, uh, again, both from a short-term and long-term perspective, what can be accomplished. Uh, our manager is very cognizant of that, and uh, we're going to continue to work on that, uh, Frank, um, knowing that uh, this, this is what... Uh, this is what our, our community is looking for. Uh, you know, when notes are being prepared by Janice Fogarty and we're talking parks and recreation issues, she makes it quite clear uh, we're promoting healthy lifestyle in our city. And that's something that uh, we wanna, want to uh, take advantage of in every which way, shape, or form. So I just wanted to let you know that I'm in full agreement with that, and, and I think most people are. Uh, Councillor, uh, Deputy Mayor Lana, you talked about the, uh, the chiller down at the uh, Founders Hall, and uh, it's, it's quite a specimen, there's no doubt about it. It's huge. Uh, so uh, I can commit to you, uh, and you know, we've tried to convey this over the last year or so, that we are doing a complete, total review of the uh, of, of, of the chiller and how it's structured down on Water Street. Uh, nobody's disagreeing with the outdoor rink. People are very pleased with the outdoor rink. Um, but uh, we're going to go uh, 
and do full evaluation mode once the season is completed. Uh, one of the things that I have been asked, and I shared this with the committee today, is residents in our city would like us to explore the option of an oval somewhere in the city of Charlottetown. We had an oval down in Memorial Field. Uh, we had to remove the oval uh, due to the reconfiguration of the uh, baseball diamond due to the requirements and specifications of the Canada Summer Games. So uh, I think, uh, Councillor Beck, you can recall when the oval was there, and uh, people really enjoyed it. And it was also good for figure skating as well. So a uh, requ request was made to staff to look at the possibilities of an oval here in the city of Charlottetown, which uh, would, be, would be tremendous. I don't know if we can parallel and emulate what is taking place in the city of Halifax, but uh, that's something that, that we could explore. So I want you to know uh, that we had that discussion again today about the, uh, the monstrosity of the, uh, looks like it's gonna be launched in the Cape Kennedy, but anyway, I, I want you to know we had that discussion again today, and uh, your concerns, and I've heard the concerns, did not fall on deaf ears. I will do my best, and of course our manager's here, to answer any questions. Thank you, Thank Councilor you. Ron. Thank you for your speech, Councilor Tweel. Um, I'm just wondering about the, yeah, I have a question. I'm just, I'm, no, I'm just trying to get to the question. Uh, the outdoor rinks, has there been any cut? Uh, someone asked me today, is there going to be one replaced at Centennial Park? And I wasn't sure of the answer, so I just thought I'd ask you tonight. Thank you. Timely. Um, I think the priority from the uh, Parks and Recreation staff is to uh, make sure that all of our ranks with the boards that are around them are uh, up and running. Uh, the staff will tell you, our management will tell you it's labor intensive. Uh, it's been challenging because of the weather. Um, we're just getting underway now and, and, and flooding some of, the, some of these uh, uh, ranks with the boards around them that are lighted are, are currently being flooded. Uh, we don't have consistency when it comes to the weather. We're anticipating a uh, you know, big snowfall, I guess, in a couple of days' time, which, again, is going to be challenging for our staff. Um, having said that, uh, Frank, you can correct me if I'm wrong, once, once our uh, outdoor uh, rinks with the boards are, are up and running, if, if there's a possibility, they're going to look at communities where we don't have uh, outdoor, uh, outdoor rinks with, with the boards and, you know, the, the latest and greatest in terms of contemporary multi-use facilities. So I, I don't know if that helps uh, Councillor Duran, but I do know that uh, the rink in Mulberry Park, I know they're working hard there to flood that and, and get that up and running, and that's going to be, uh, that's going to be fantastic for the, for the residents in that community. And I know that uh, there's a lot of excitement. There was a lot of excitement when we made the announcement that we were going to construct that facility. So... Uh, I'll entertain a supplementary. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That was, that was great. Second time. It no, no. Just, just, just a, go as much as you want no, because I, I want to hear the. Just, I want the answers. Asking, I, Third time. No, yeah. no. I'm just asking. We we usually had a, a dozen outdoor rinks. Yeah. I understand you want to get the the ones with boards first, but will it go back to the status quo of wherever we went last year with all the rinks, or or, or are we just going to concentrate on other ones? Thank you, Councilor Tweel. Uh, we're, we're, you know, one of the things I've emphasized in this chamber uh, for the last number of years is equal, equal and fairness when it comes to uh, geographical representation. Uh, the manager did indicate we're going to go into awards that don't have any ranks and boards or, or ranks with, with boards um, to see what can be done. Again, we are challenged by the weather. Uh, our staff went to great lengths to explain that today at today's meeting. I, I understand that, and I think most people can understand that. So uh, we're going to work our do our best to try to get to some of the other areas that don't have any rinks whatsoever. And uh, if we can get to Centennial Park at a later date, I'm sure yeah. our manager has heard that, and I'm sure we'll do our best. And, and I think our manager yeah. sent the signal he would like to uh, 
uh, address this as well. Hey, Councilor Tron, did you get an answer? Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, no, I did, uh, Frank? No, no, I did answer. Yeah, I okay, did we're, answer. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah. We're just going to. Frank? I did answer. Frank? Uh, your Worship, through the Chair, through to Councilor Duran. I just want to, I guess, end up on, like, we do have six outdoor rinks that we are proposing right now, and we have underway. Uh, Founders Hall is open and opened last Thursday. We have uh, Elmer McFadgen uh, rink is under maintenance right now, and it, we're still building the ice. We have Gordy Griffin is open in good shape, but open today officially. We have the Winslow uh, West Road Community Center open today, and it's in good shape. Uh, we're still working on the Mulberry one, but it's hoped to be open, weather permitting, in the next couple days. Um, <clears throat> and then the other one that we partner with the Winslow Lions Club, it officially opened today, and it's in good shape as well. Having said that, we're working on building the ice at those rinks. We just have enough to get it open. They'll need more ice to build it up so that when we get warm weather, we can maintain and keep the ice. And then also working on the, uh, the two that we're still working on up and going. Once we get those up and going, if weather ends up being perfect and we have the coldest winter we've had in years, of course we can try to work on other rinks, but we need cold weather. We need consistently minus six degrees, which we haven't, haven't had even this year yet. So yeah. that's our challenge. If, yeah. And uh, Mulberry Park is on that list. Yes, it is. And it is the, the issue with Mulberry Park right now is it's, it's got new asphalt, so it's, it's warmer. It's, it's not freezing as quickly as some okay. of the others. Okay. Water and sewer utility. Thank you, Councilor Twill. <laughs> Councilor Drone. We didn't meet this month uh, for water and sewer. We had a lot of sickness and uh, issues, so we're meeting Thursday. Anybody have any questions about water and sewer? I'll try to answer as best I can, or our managers here. So, thank you. Uh, Councilor, uh, excuse me, Councilor Twill. Uh, thank, thank you, Councillor Duran. Um, my question is: uh, It seems to be, uh, it seems to be an issue there. Uh, we're, we're trying, I'm trying to get a, a sense as to where we're going with our uh, fiber optics. Uh, two questions um, through you to our manager. One is: um, Will a contract be signed in the not too distant future? Uh, I thought it would have been signed by now, to be honest with you. And then secondly, I'd like a progress report as to uh, where we're at with the fiber optics. Um, is it 80% completed? Is it 85% completed? Is it 90, 95? Where exactly <laughs> are, are we in terms of the uh, completion date? Thank you. Castron. Yes, thank you, Councillor Twill. We did put this on the agenda for a meeting in December. Uh, like I said, we had some sickness and, and other issues that people couldn't attend the meeting. And this was the next date available is Thursday. So your questions are on the agenda for, for Thursday um, and others. So, uh, you know, you're welcome to come to the meeting if you, if you want to sit in on it. Or the manager can can certainly try to answer you where we're at right now. If he has that data, that'd be that'd be great. Thank you, Councilor, Councilor Duran. We did give a notice of motion on the audit review. That was January third, was not Eleanor? Yes. We, so there's a notice of motion to, that was in your package. Yes, I know. Yeah. Good. Okay. Notice the motion is coming forward, and all these questions will be answered on Thursday. But if, if you request, and the manager can give you some Wait. updates right now, and that'll be before our meeting, no problem at all. Thank you. Mr. McKillen. Sure, thank you. So we continue to work on the contract. I was reviewing it again today. I received a draft back from the lawyers. I mean, any details of the contract we won't discuss in an open forum, but we are working on the contract with the contractor. And when it is ready, it will come forward to council for council's re review. Uh, construction, there's still a couple of sites that we're trying to work towards making those connections. Really, there's two sites left that we're trying to get the conduit in the ground enabled so that we can then make the connections. Uh, so with those two particular connections that you referenced, uh, Mr. McKeown, uh, 
are they the only outstanding challenges that's left for this project to be totally and completely completed? So that's getting the conduit in the ground, we have the fiber, and then it's making the connections for the fiber, and how we make those connections will be dependent on the contract. Okay. But we do have a notice of motion that's going back to the committee, right, Mr. Chair? Yes, we do. But the audit review. Just to jump in on his question. Yeah. So we, we have almost uh, the cable connect or in the ground, but is, is any of it connected? Like, uh, is, is, is the whole process down to two places being connected, or, or where are we at with that? Thanks. Yeah, so there's two locations without the conduit in the ground, and the fiber optic cables are there, but we need to work out how we're going to make the connections. There's currently a connection between City Hall and our new planning building that we've been using. That is how communications take place now between City Hall and our planning department. And we have a connection between our Milton Vale Reservoir site and our Milton Vale Wellfield site. Yeah. Two sites of 30 kilometers. That's why I wanted to ask for the review. Okay. Okay, so we're moving on. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Notice of motion, uh, the CAO has two notices. Can you read them out? Uh, no, they go, they go through. No, no. Oh, no, just a point of clarification. Yeah. So, notice of motions at the committee level. <coughs> it should be the uh, manager or. So, so, you serve a notice of motion at the committee level. Do you read them? No, I didn't read it. You don't read them? No. Oh, okay. No. Okay. Goes through this. It, notice of motion, in my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, it goes through this body first, then it goes back to the <laughs> committee that is overseeing the implementation of yep, it. Is, yep. Is that right? Just one sec. CAO, is that correct? Um, thank you, Your Worship. So, yeah, so proper format is to make your notice of motion in a council meeting. So if you spoke about a notice of motion in, in committee, um, I suppose that could be a notice for your committee, but it's not the same as a notice of motion for council, which has to be announced in a regular council meeting. And Mr. Chair of Water and Wastewater, I did submit the notice of motion to the committee. I didn't read it. We just it was just forwarded on to council on January third under notice of motion presented by Brown to conduct an audit review of the Milton Vale Wellfield Development Phase Three B communication system project. So that's all it was read. But we did the the resolution or the notice of motion was sent to, to your committee, correct? Okay. So we're just reading the notice right now for two two notes. Okay. Do you want to read them there? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. So the first notice of motion is for uh, Councillor Tweel, and the motion is that City Council respects, respectfully requests the provincial government and respective government officials responsible for the Outreach Centre host and attend a public meeting to be held at Birchwood Junior High School to discuss, collaborate, and answer questions from the broader community uh, centering around the Outreach Centre. So that's the first motion. And the second is uh, again from Councillor Tweel, that City Council conduct an independent, impartial, comprehensive and extensive outside investigation to determine who made the decision, who was directly responsible, condoned and supported the illegal drug usage, the sale of drugs on and near the premises of the outreach center. Okay, and no, notice of motion, there's no discussion. So could, could I just add one thing I just was told by our lawyer David, um, as for your resolution on the procedural bylaw changes, there you, go. you someone should move and second a deferral of that procedural bylaw. Maybe. We have to do that before. Okay, so move by well, move by Councillor Beck, second by Councillor Bernard. All those in favor of the deferral, please raise your hand. Okay. motion that I submitted not speaking to it but the request was for the premier and three cabinet ministers to host that public meeting yeah. at Bruce Junior High School so premier, no, okay but you no, can't no, no, speak no, to I, the notice of oh, that, that's the, we I got the notice it no, no, goes, I know, but yes it goes back we I know wanted, I want no just, with all due respect mr. mayor I want the motion 
to be specific. Yeah. And that is Premier of the Province, mm -hmm. Tom Re Lance, Minister, Lois Thompson, yeah. Minister, and uh, Mark, uh, McLean, Mark McLean, Minister. Okay. They're all interrelated with the Outreach Center. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we're all right with the Councillor Beck. That's all right with the deferral? It's, okay. Okay. New business, one resolution. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, moved by Deputy Mayor Yankoff, seconded by Councillor McCabe, be it resolved that effective immediately and as recommended by His Worship, Mayor Philip Brown. Is it McDonald? Lee. Lee McDonald be appointed to planning board to replace outgoing member uh, Basil Hambly. Okay, questions called, but there's just one issue. Um, Julie's not here, Councillor McCabe, so we need a seconder. Okay. Here, just write your name there. Okay, questions called. How many is in favor? Yes. Those against? Okay. Councilor Beck. You go ahead. No. Okay. I think you were before me. <clears throat> Whoever he's got read. Okay. <clears throat> Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Just for clarification, uh, Your Worship, the second motion, it reads as if they're requesting counsel to do the investigation. Am I reading that correctly? The first sentence is that city council yeah. conduct an independent investigation. That's right. So they want us to do the investigation? Yeah. So that goes, that goes back to the CAO to find out what standing committee that goes to. Yeah. Just doesn't read that way. No, just, but it, yeah, Councillor, um, CAO, Eleanor, do you want to comment? Thank you, Your Worship. So to conduct, if for City Council to conduct an independent uh, review means that we would go to outside to find something, <laughs> someone independent from Council to conduct the, the review. Councillor Beck? Yeah, I, I just have one quick question. Um, going back to our voting showing up on the screen. Remember we asked about yes. that? Yes. Where are we with that? It's fine. It's, we have to have the 10 members here. If you don't have 10 members, there is some issues with it, but we'll get them worked out. It is, I spoke to Rory, Rory Chaisson, and he does want to start it as soon as possible. Okay. okay. And is that for all meetings? Like are currently what we have? Mostly regular, regular monthly meetings. Or is it just for the... We could do it for both. It, but it's usually like council. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Another? Yeah. Councillor Duran's got his hand up. Yep. Yeah. Ready to go? I just have one quick question. The notice of motion. So that goes to the, the, the proper standing committee. And yes. the decision we made in that standing committee about what's going to happen. They'll come back here. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. okay. Moved by Councillor Duran, second by Councillor Tweel. Motion to